Episode 2 of the Total Beginners Stationeer Tutorial on Mars. What's going on here is that um, there's no light here, but I tossed down some water, so that's in the air now. It looks pretty spooky, right? And what happened there? What, what happened there in that corner? What is that? <laughs> oh, we have some chickens. Yes, we have some chickens. There's a chick, the little yellow thing there. And that uh, brown thing is a fertilized egg. The white ones around that are not cracked are normal eggs. And uh, what I did is I took these six eggs that were in, in, the, in this thing here and tossed them down and they raised the temperature to above 15 degrees and so then at some point they would crack open and then a chick would spawn and would instantly then turn after some time into a chick chicken and um, then they lay some random egg every once in a while and uh, right now a uh, rocket works is actually working on the chickens um, what's currently in the works is that uh, the temperature doesn't have to be above 15 degrees but has to be between 35 and 40 which makes more sense for breeding an, an egg that's why chickens uh, sit on those oh, <laughs> look at that and um, they also will have lungs so you can actually kill them then with uh, with the wrong atmosphere and uh, whenever they lay an egg they will use up some nutrition and they will actually actively seek out food when they're hungry and uh, they die after um, I think uh, four months I, that should be like 30 in-game days I would assume uh, not 30, 30 times 4, 120 um, and uh, they uh, they also have a tooltip you point at them and they will tell you how old they are or if they're hungry stuff, stuff like that but uh, we don't want to play with chickens that's um, I don't have that a version yet that's uh, being built there which with the things I described so let's not go there <laughs> I don't want to teach you chickens I don't know enough about these so load world see I just loaded a safe game that's the safe game as before the same safe game as before dude what uh, uh Okay, that is irritating. Mm, but a different uh, history entry, you know, because you have a whole history of those. But apparently not as many as I thought I would have. What is this? Damn. Now you might say, well, just continue with uh, with where you were. But um, that's, that's not an option. Oh, man. Now I have a chicken emergency. That's ridiculous. Okay, let's deal with that. That is unexpected. See, between videos I mined and I put up another locker and uh, I cleaned things up a bit. So, uh, yeah, that would make sense then to keep around. But, uh, um, you know, the other save game before this... Uh, well, what I'm saying is I don't want to have to start over. There's too much work involved. So I have to now somehow get rid of the chickens. But I don't know if that's even possible. That's fucked up, man. I had a completely different agenda. I actually have a list of things here that I want to get through. Uh, so, that and some uh, iron walls. I have never actually dealt with chickens. Only in this way right now. Like, I did some, hey, look at this, this is funny, nah, and then uh, I loaded the save game and forgot about it. And now I have to actually live with that. That's new. So the plan here is I want to make a little box room that I can then seal up, and I want to push the chickens inside. I don't know if that will work. And then they will probably eventually bleed over into the, um, into the, into the station, because uh, of I don't know, physics glitches. Yeah, I'm, with physics, <laughs> that's what you have to say, right? In this game, when I'm talking about physics, in this moment I'm talking about actual mechanics, because for whatever reason they're calling that physics in other games. Um, you know, mechanical stuff. Um, so that's what I meant. Things pushing other things and such. I 
good thing that there's so low pressure here because um, getting the chickens in here will be easier if they come out of their own free will. Who knows if this will happen now as I create a temperature differential. Ah, uh, not quite. No! Okay, maybe I can uh, use this. Yeah, this works. All right, all right. Not yet too late. Not yet too late, I guess. And everybody who has dealt with chickens for real so far, <laughs> you think it's not too late? Well, I don't know if it's too late. Okay, this is really annoying. Me cleans up between videos. Also me makes it more disorderly than before. Why did the safe game not kick in? What happened there? Please kindly fuck off into your little corner, right? Okay, yes. Is that agreeable? Okay, uh, let's see. Don't miss anyone. That's like, it's concentrated evil. Like, you know? <laughs> Pick up all of them. All the black thingies. I'm referring to the um, time bandits. Well, looking good. Uh, did... Fucking zip it off. So let's see this. No, what the fuck? What? One of them decides to move in this direction for whatever arbitrary reason, and then uh, all others are being pushed by that. That's, that's unfair, man. Why are they suddenly so keen on moving around? They weren't moving at all when I was uh, waiting for them to become many before I started recording. Okay, that's good. Now let's see if they can kind of kind of die out there. So let's open them to the Martian surface. Why is this closed now? Because I went in the other way. I might actually be doomed because maybe the chickens don't die when exposed to the Martian atmosphere. But then I will just eventually resort to safe game editing and whatever. That's fair. Because then I'll probably implement it. Or I will just survive as long as I can with them and eventually a game update will make them mortal and then yeah. That might actually happen even today, this evening. Not that I plan to record then, still, or again. <sighs> yeah, be gone. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Why are they moving around so much? Is for example, is maybe the atmosphere, the temperature too unpleasant so they're seeking out a different location in hopes that it will be better? Another egg. There will also be brown eggs at some point, so more chickens, if they don't die in time. And my understanding is they don't. But you know, I have a beefy machine, so I guess we will be good for, a for some time. Okay then, the agenda. Where to go first? Why is there water in there? I have this nice water gatherer here. Well, I tossed down some more because I wanted a free slot in my um, gas storage mining belt. And as you can see here, capacity 40 liters, 39.6 are already in there. And um, it doesn't take more. So let's make it take more then. Let me show you what that's like. We have uh, here lots of things that we can build with the um, pipe bender. Um, and... Then we have the pipe utility liquid, or the pipe utility gas, which I believe are completely identical, except of course for the, for the stuff that you can put in them, and what you can connect. Because pipes, uh, you cannot connect liquid pipes with gas pipes and vice versa, except by some kind of uh, transitionary um, 
uh, element, you know, some vital for such. Actually, let's make two. Another one, thank you. So let me show you what that does. Um, that's a tank, that's useful, I want to put a tank here, okay. But I can also put a large tank in there, and for that you can see here in the tooltip, need more pipe utility liquid. So that's what I intend to do. Then, as this third thing, we have the... Um, that is to put uh, liquid bottles in there. One of those liquid bottles is already here. In that uh, uh, hydroponics thing. Um, and the same thing exi exists for gas, like I said. Very important stuff, you will need that a lot. And uh, on the left side you can see there's a connector with a water drop here because it's for liquid. And on the right side you can see nothing because there's a tooltip. Let me turn that, okay. Now you see there, that's the symbol of a logic connector. Why is there a logic connector? Because you can check what's in that thing using logic. So you can... <laughs> it's nice to see something else moving around instead of just myself. Uh, because you can, uh, you can, for example, build a machine that fills your canister that you put in there automatically. And there are two types of canisters. Um, one is the normal gas canister that you already see here. And there's also one that can take more pressure. This one uh, bursts at 10 megapascals and plus, or slightly above 10 megapascals. And um, the uh, other one I'm talking about takes up to 20 megapascals, so double the amount. This doesn't help us here with our waste um, tank, which can take up to uh, four, kilo, uh, four megapascals, because uh, that's still the same pressure situation, you know? The pressure would still be four megapascals. The problem here isn't the bottle, but the, um, the pump is my interpretation. I've never read some official explanation for that. Okay then, um, this. As you already know, or the cables, you can use the um, wire cutters in the other hand, and then you also only need straight or curved cables to achieve whatever outcome you want, basically. And for pipes, it's the same with the wrench. Pipe utility liquid. Ah, I made a pipe utility gas. Okay, that's not bad, but uh, not useful right now. Ah, okay. Now the air should clear up, slowly, because now it can. The capacity of the system is now 290 liters. That should be enough. Also, it looks cool. <clears throat> yeah, something about pipe systems. Uh, this is probably... Uh, one and the same system. Yeah, actually, you can. We know that already. The the liquid pipe has 20 liters capacity. This has also 20 liters, and we measured 40. So yes, one system. <clears throat> you can see here pipe network, right? Um, um, when I have something like a valve, and then I continue the pipes, that would be a new pipe network. And so the simulation will then have to, for every game tick, have to calculate the balancing out between these two if the valve is open. And so uh, if you want to move a lot of gas uh, or liquids quickly, then it's good to have something that has large volume. Uh, and when you have two pipe networks, uh, then the fact that there's some connector between makes the transition between the two slow, slower definitely as if uh, than if this were just one network. So if you want to like do your pressure equalization here, not by means of just brutally opening the door, but uh, by actually pumping stuff back in, then your source, there should be some kind of storage here, you know. For example, uh, between this passive vent and uh, here I could add, maybe on top of the station, um, the equivalent of that for gas 
and then we would, would have a lot of storage in there. So this thing would then pump from this room into that storage, but this would also stream out because there would be pressure equalization, but <laughs> the chicken. But it would also be the opposite way. So um, when there's no air streaming uh, going on, then the pressure in here would equalize with the pressure in there. So there would be a large volume of gas in there. So I wanna, when, when I want to fill this room to equalize the pressure, you know, before I open the door to the indoors, to the inside, uh, then that would be rather quick because this thing can take directly from a large reservoir of gas instead of having to wait for the gas uh, deciding out of free will to, uh, to enter this little pipe here. <laughs> well, that's the Martians, isn't it? We have Martians now. They're marching around. Uh, give me a few minutes, I will clean this up again. I would tell you what else is on the agenda, but I don't remember. So, can't look that up right now. Let's see, I prepared some... Um, some things for us to, s to smelt. Two batches of steel. And uh, this will be solder, which we need for microchip and, uh, and housing to program some stuff. And this will be electrum, which will allow us to make a, a lamp like that. Not that we need to, we, we have one already. Uh, and also this is necessary for the programming and uh, chip stuffs. I don't know exactly how it was, but I know that to get going with programming, you need electrum and you need um, uh, solder. And this time I'll also explain how that whole thing works with, with the furnace, because last time I was rather quick, because, um, yeah. What plants do we have here? Corn seeds. You can... Uh, you get wheat from that and then you can turn that into bread but I don't know too much about that and there's rice never grew that wheat oh wait I oh no I meant wheat wheat and corn I, I just confused the two then here we have two potato seeds even though all of the others are three why is that because we already planted one and now look the plant is now matured um, I like I explained at the end of the of episode one the, the previous video um, the plant would grow to have a potato or two and um, then it would um, say it is striving or growing slowly or whatever towards seeding and then it, if you wait long enough then it would also have seeds which it now has and now it has the potatoes and the seeds um, if I would have plucked the potatoes that would not have been a problem unless I pluck even the last one because then the plant's cycle starts over the plant is gone then uh, There's also tomatoes, which I don't have here. We don't start with those any longer. That was earlier in development um, They changed that because they wanted to give us uh, this Because uh, now some planets really need that and so we were kind of fucked Mm, did I put everything in there? Pumpkin seeds, you can eat those, I think. And you can make pumpkin pie, which is the most sophisticated level of food that would give you four stars. Though I have just read that uh, the foodstuffs um, don't... Uh, it's not like I eat one bad thing and then everything goes down like that, but it is an average of the last so and so many meals. What does the what do the stars say? Well, I think that defines the maximum amount of food that I can have. For example, if the stars are low, then the maximum might be 50% or 75, 75%. And so um, I cannot do so many things because I have to, to eat again so fast, you know? I'm currently in easy mode. The normal mode has a more realistic or more quicker um, game more game relevant decay of my current food that i have in my system and water i have in my system and uh on stationers difficulty st stationary difficulty is uh, indeed extremely fast which is why i tend to alter my difficulty uh i mod them is what they say you mod or you make a mod for that it's not like you program some dll or executable or something uh, it's just a change of some text files and such uh, and um, i explained in one of my videos how that works I think it is in the series of my Europa playthrough, so um, maybe I re remember to put that link up. 
So as you can see, my mining, uh, since it took some time, um, you can, the filters have been used up somewhat. And I also already got the warning that uh, filter low, you know. So maybe I want to swap these. Oh. And seeing those eggshells and seeing uh, the, um, the filters here that are at zero, you can refill them, you know. Um, what do we do with waste? We can recycle it. Yeah, another thing I want to do is I want to put up the logic chips which allow us to automate that thing. You might say, well, don't do that with programming. Nah, I want, also want to show you the logic chips, so... <clears throat> let's, let's do that then. I'm gonna change the music. It's radio, you know, it's real time. I don't know what's, what's uh, coming there, so that's why I switch so often. Soma FM. They have a lot of channels, not just the stuff that I play during my videos, so um, really all across the board. Okay, so little example. Um, Also have a metal channel, everything basically. Okay, we can now use a recycler. Once we have put it up and there's no space really. Hmm, bit tight. Should I put it here? Yeah, let's just put it here. I'm gonna eat you. So, some cables. I made some cables also, or less tedium during the video. Ah, why not? I have lamps in here, why don't I use those? Which reminds me, um, these suck 200 watts and our battery is currently good, but eventually that will show, you know, what I'm doing here, using so much electricity. So, um, waiting for a storm is a way. We actually had a storm while I was mining. You didn't see that between videos. Uh, but uh, we could also put up a few more wind turbines per default. So let's do that. Let's uh, actually start building some of those. Iron, gold, copper. Well, as, you, as you can also see, I added some more pipes out there. This, the cooling system, the makeshift cooling system, uh, which is not really a system, it's a makeshift solution only, ends here. I still have to connect those two, <laughs> that's why I'm carrying this one pipe. And I want to put up some more of these uh, uh, radiators. For that I need more steel, aka over here. And what else is planned, probably not all during this video, is... Um, yeah, logic chips. Yeah, and programming. Then I also want to add a one by one room, actually over here. And... Um, that with manual hatches and then add some larger space over there so we can expand the base. And yeah, I also wanted to go into decorations. You might think decoration, nah, I don't need that. You will you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes emotionally. Ow. Oh. Okay, this is annoying.
Hmm. Mm, okay, what's the next step? Recycling, of course. I know that I... Um, ah, come on. Now that, that I connected this thing, let's recycle some stuff. Does it stack? It stacks. Wonderful. Okay. No littering, please, chickens. At least not indoor. I mean, they're currently soiling the planet with their presence. Disgusting creatures. <laughs> oh, right. Um. Waste tank critical. Ah, yes, the waste tank where I breathe into. Let's open that. And this too. Now there's lots more capacity. You can see there's already 98 kilopascals in there. Some of that came from my breathing stuffs, which are still on and still doing something. Maybe I should turn this off. And also just from equalizing with the atmosphere, which is already at 65 kilopascals. So whatever is in the air here is now also in that tank. That kind of mixture, I mean. Keep producing, man. What is missing? Copper. Hmm. Okay, let's recycle that then. So this lump of crap is um, a reagent mix with some stuff in there and that's actually clearly defined, I just can't see it. And what do I do with that? Well, you can put it in a centrifuge and then you will get separated out all the stuff that's in there. Some iron, some this, some that, some biomatter, who knows what, what's in there. I will just put that here. So that's a more compact way of storing your garbage. And centrifuges we would probably need at some point anyway. Uh, because we'd probably like to um, have some deep miners. And deep miners, they deliver you dirty ore, which looks pretty much like this stuff, almost, and uh, needs the same treatment. And then you get um, iron ore, uh, which you can then smelt, uh, or, or whatever's in there, you know. The only thing that you don't get out of the ground like this is ice. So the ice is only at the surface. Um, but there's also ice in space, actually. But I've never seen that myself, because for that you need rocketry. And I haven't yet managed to get that off the ground. In the hell. I'm trying to be efficient when it comes to... Cables. That's what I'm doing here. No, don't stand in there. Basically cut off your legs. Okay, nothing's gonna happen to you, but uh, your suit's gonna be damaged and... Uh, no. No, no. Oxygen low. Right. Oxygen critical. Mm -hmm. And in one of my playthroughs, I actually failed to switch those on, and I'm like, "Hey, what's happening? Huh? Oh, why am I going unconscious?" Ah! And then I died. Oh, that happened. And let's hope this works as planned. They're already generating electricity, but who cares, right? They are currently not connected. No! Yeah, ah, it works. Okay, very good. Now we have lots more electricity production. In comparison, you know, it's still not much, but instead of one, we have one, two, three, four, four times that production. Let's look at this. We have 70 watts right now, and that's a little bit more than one of those lamps in there consumes. In other words, wouldn't it be nice to be able to turn those off? Let's make a light switch. For that, we obviously go to the electronics printer. Ah, 
Oh, which has two more wind turbines for us. Also nice. Mm, and we make... Let's see. Switch. Does that exist? Kit logic switch. I think that's exactly what we need. Let's make one. You see the resources it needs are very little. This thing, of course, also needs electricity while producing, and you can look up in the stationpedia how much that is. Though I never really bothered with that. I mean, you have here how you can see how much electricity you have, and if it's too little, then you do something about it. End of story. I mean, these details are um, good that they exist, but uh, I don't really bother with that. So, light switch. Um, we would probably need that near the door. Like when you come home, you switch it on, or when you leave, you turn it off. But where would that be then? It's getting a bit crowded in here. I think maybe I want to move this, or do we keep it like this? Mm. Yeah, okay, let's look at the light switches. We have five different ones. This one, the important button. Why is it called important button? Because uh, you can't hit it without first opening that. You know, uh, like the cheap version of uh, Alien 1 trying to blow up everything intentionally. I have to flip quite a few levers to, to get there. Of course, you can implement that in here. Anyway, now let's keep going. Uh, we have uh, the dial. That is a thing that can set a value from 0 to whatever you want. You can define the maximum and you can read that value out. For example, we could, with some elaboration, we could, with some work, go and say uh, we we turn the light switch to one, then this will be on, or to two, then this, and uh, let's say this will be on, to three, and then maybe this and this will be on, to four, and then this and this will be on, and to five, then all of them will be on. That's possible if you wish so. Some work, though, of course. Um, then we have the just the button, you push that thing and then an impulse will go into whatever system you have there. Then we have the lever, which is a button that, uh, a switch that will stay on or stay off and you can clearly see whether it's on or off. We don't need that with the lights, because the light itself will be the indicator, so we can just resort to the simple switch here. And that's what I'm gonna do. Where will I put that though? Can I put that here? No, that's a different uh, circuit. Dip, dip, dip. Mm, not so random. Uh, let's, uh, here, here is nice. This thing doesn't need electricity, it's just a logic connection. It will just give you information. And I realize what I just did is useless. Because this thing um, is... Um, it Well, it's a switch that gives you the information wh whether it is switched on or switched off. But it doesn't do anything. Because uh, you would need another device that allows you uh, to read out that value and then do something with it. And um, Rocketworks uh, was nice and said, you know, you need switching so often. Uh, let's not need... Uh, let's not make it necessary to put up so many um, different devices to just switch something on and off and so among the uh, logic devices there is one that is a logic writer switch which means it can write a value to a device for example it can write to the lamps whether they should be on or off and uh, you can it has a mechanical switch built in okay I just type logic what is there with there's a logic transmitter for example with which you can uh, actually transmit a device's information, logic information, remotely. Um, so uh, I used that at some point uh, with the advanced tablet which I was carrying with me when I was out there to use the advanced tablet to switch something in the station on and off. Yes, that can be done. Only I haven't yet found a good use for that. Um, kit logic switch we just used. Kit logic processor. Um, I actually don't know what that is. Come on. Yeah, that's missing. I want to be able to press escape here, man. Okay, logic processor. Hello?
All right. Okay. So uh, I just thought that all the logic chips, I mean these chips, were only part of one kit. But that's not true. There are two kits, and this kit has these. You can do math, multiply, divide, and such. You can uh, select probably based upon an input value, uh, which output value you want, or maybe multiple input values, which shall be the output value. Unary is, I think, uh, something like ma uh, maximum and minimum. You know, you pipe in a value and out comes another value. So that is not dynamic, it's just bluntly applying some... Uh, it, does, it only needs one input, while math needs two inputs when you add two values. Compare two values and out comes a logic value that you can react to uh, minimum, maximum. Yeah, you give in two numbers and the smaller or larger of both will come out. And logic gate, I'm not sure what it's good for, but you know, you can read up all that stuff here. Anyway, we want to make some logic chips of the other kind, and I will explain those. Logic I.O. We need one for the light, then since I want to switch all of the lights, I will also need a batch writer, so I will need two. And since that takes some gold, let's put some gold in there. And then I will need some chips for the arc furnace to, sh to automate that switching on, you know. So let's make four and see how we fare. Yeah, so my FM you can usually listen to like all the time. Maybe not at this volume, maybe a bit more in the background. But games like the Lucas Arts games, they have the, the awesome music of from John Williams. But at some point you have heard it, you know. And then the Star Wars theme is getting old, maybe. And what you can do then is turn off that music and play some other music. But which music is suitable for a game that doesn't get on your nerves? Is it sticking out too much? Well, exactly this, this stuff, you know. Uh, the various channels that Soma FM has which have stuff like this. This one for example is called Drone Zone. Okay, that's uh, our superfluous switch. Let's put um, let's put that away for now because we don't need it. And instead we put up... what, what do we have? Let's uh, look at this. Trying to rotate. Okay, here's a logic reader. This allows us to read from one device a value. And then we can select which value that shall be. You can see here um, we have an in selector, that's a screw, and then we have a var selector, that's a screw. So we can, for example, select uh, the door, uh, one of the doors as our input, and then we can select the value, uh, w which value do we want to read? For example, um, whether the door is open. Zero means it's closed, and one means it's uh, means it's open. You can see here we can also write that value and not just read it. Um, and if you write a zero to the door, then it will be closed if it's not already closed. It's that simple. Yeah. Idle means the door is not currently in the process of opening or closing. And that's obviously something you cannot write. That wouldn't make sense. So that's values that you can read. Then we have the uh, logic writer, which does the opposite. So for example, I could go and read the value of whether the door is open, then I have a zero or a one, which you can see here above the tooltip will then come out of the chip. And then I have the logic writer chip and I have an input. So I could uh, input then the zero or one of whether the door is open. And then I could write that value directly to a device. Um, you can see here at the top, you can choose which device that would be and at the bottom you could choose which value that would be uh, so for example I could t connect that to the light and then say light be uh, 0 or 1 regarding your on state exactly identical to whether the door is open or closed it's really that simple then you connect that with some cables you can see that this chip also needs electricity and at the left top this little bulb there that is uh, green or red depending on whether you have turned this thing on because it will use some electricity I believe 10 watts I'm not sure can look that up of course then we have the batch writer which is like the writer 
but it doesn't write to one device, it writes to one device type. So if you say, I want to write to, uh, for example, these lights uh, up there, uh, to, uh, you select that type, uh, then all of those devices on, that, on the same cable network will be affected. And in the same way, you also have the uh, batch reader, which uh, reads from, uh, let's say, five doors, whether they are open. And now you might wonder what happens if they're not all open or closed at the same time. Well, in that uh, chip, you also have a screw that selects how to deal with those multiple values. Should, you, should it take the maximum of them or the minimum of them? You know, for example, if you take the maximum and if you're talking five doors, then only one door needs to be open so that a one comes out. So we can basically ask, is any door open? And we can, in the same way, ask, is, uh, is any door still closed or whatever? <clears throat> uh, and you can average them, for example. I'm currently explaining, this is not the programming language, you know? This is an alternative way, an alternate, more simple way, more suitable for beginners, I would presume, uh, to, um, to control your devices. One check. A moment is this working yeah okay batch writer um, then we have the logic mirror um, see on, on the left we would pipe in a cable network and on the right we would pipe to uh, outwards to a different cable network and now you kind of already know what that's about here on the screw you select which device you mean for example if the airlock is a completely secluded thing which it is in our case then we could measure whether the door is open or closed on a different cable network because um, we could just pipe that information over there you know um, of, uh, you, you might now think, well, some devices have, uh, have their logic and power separate. Um, can we not use that uh, if uh, that to the same effect? Exactly, exactly, and that's why they are separate. Power low. Batch right. Mm -hmm. The slot reader is what we will need for the arc furnace because we don't just want to know a value of the furnace, but we want to know a value of this of one of the slots of the furnace. This makes it one dimension more complex, one layer, you know. Then batch reader, reagent reader. I'm not sure what that does. That is about things like um, is there still iron ingots in my manufactory and such. I haven't I've never used that so far. Batch slot reader. Pretty obviously the same as the slot reader, except you can get multiple values and then you can tell it to average them or whatever. And that is what we want now, the logic writer switch. But what will I write? To what device do I want to write? I want to turn all of those lights on and off at the same time, so I will need a batch writer anyway for that. But that means that the batch writer will will work with an input value and an input value might as well just be the switch you know the the, the, the switch that I just removed I'm not sure um, I th okay let's look at the logic switch because I think what I just said is wrong logic switch you can see here the logic switch 2 has some logic values uh, open and closed. That is, for example, for the. Um, I think this is actually a, a, uh, okay. Setting is whether the switch is on or not, and um, and the important button thing that can be opened and closed. You can do that pro programmatically, or you can measure whether it's open or closed. So when, you, when this thing is open, you can, for example, turn on a, a, an alarm light, a red blinking flashing alarm light on, uh, on top of that. So you know, oh man, shit's going down, don't push that button, you know? You can do that, if you so wish. There's also a, a klaxon, a speaker that you can put up and there are various sound samples that you can play. N not arbitrary sound samples, but you know. Uh, so, I wanted to go to this switch that I was using originally. And if I would want to use this in the batch with the batch writer chip, the batch writer chip would have to get an input value. And I'm pretty sure that the batch writer chip doesn't have options for me to choose what value it will read. Because for that, for example, we have the reader chip. So we would need this thing, then we would need a reader chip which reads whether that thing is currently on or off. 
and then we would uh, that, this, uh, that output value would then go straight into the batch writer but instead we can just use the, this thing the logic writer switch and then probably say that it actually can we do that I'm not sure huh Uh, let's make it simple. Let's first switch only one light for, you know, for beginner's sake. You can see it has three connectors, so I will place it like this in this location. And turn it on. And now it's blinking an error because, uh, what error? Oh, it doesn't say, but sometimes the, the tooltips are more informative like th than this. And Rocket Rock is still working on those. It's not like this is final, no, no they're working on this or on that, depending on, you know, what the mood strikes, basically. Though they have some very focused development. It's not like they're doing this willy-nilly. So, this switch, what shall it switch? What can we switch? Let's lose, use the screwdriver. Now you will see uh, that we have, um, when I click left mouse button, uh, I have to click the left mouse button to change the value. Um, the current value is active vent and the next value that I would select if I click again is the area power control. It is showing both of these because it is very useful. Let me try for example target one of my lights. Okay that wasn't was too fast. See um, when you see that text on the right and you will stop yourself then you will probably be too late but it usually works out just fine if you're not too fast. So it makes it much more convenient to turn something on or off. So let's switch one of the lights. That's what I want to switch. I don't know which one of these this is because they're not named. I could give them names, but I want to switch all of them basically. Can't do this with this one right now. And which value of this light do I want to switch? Whether it is locked. What is lock? While we're at it. Um, well, I cannot... Um, this, this door is currently locked, as in, uh, um, uh, it's too complex, let's not, let's not go there for logic mode and all that, don't want to explain that now, it will be overwhelming. But, um, for example, uh, we can measure what's going on in one of those pipes with the pipe analyzer, which can be turned on and off, there's a switch on that device if I would place it here, and uh, if I add some programming to that, that might then turn off on and off some valve or heating and so forth, so that can ultima ultimately be dangerous, and so it would be important that the values that this thing reads are correct, but when I turn this off, the values that I read will all be zero, and so it might be important that I can't turn it off, and so I can pro programmatically say, lock one, and then on one, and if I do it like this, I have no chance to turn it off too quickly or in time or at all, it will just stay on. And uh, most devices have a lock value. This is the on value. Oh, now we can switch this. I have to give this thing power, else it won't operate. And now, aha, we have a light switch. And we would need four of these, but I want to use one switch for all of them together. So, I need a batch writer then. This is pretty obvious. Batch writer. Yeah, uh, if the tools could be used with hotkeys, that would really make uh, using them a lot more fluent, so I hope they put that in at some point. Huh? Oh, right. Flashing an error, because it's not configured. Let's see, what can I select as input? Maybe I can actually select this switch, that would be awesome. I don't think so, because the logic writer switch, it writes decidedly to a place. Um, I cannot select the, the variable that would be read, I can only def define the output type and variable. Therefore, I need an already prepared value, so I cannot just read from the simple logic switch that we used before. And uh, this one I probably can also not select, but let's see, let's see. Oh, I can actually cycle that logic writer switch. Okay, that's cool then. Then we're fine. Then we need these two for, the, for all the lights, I think. Or don't we? I'm not sure, let's see. 
Uh, output type. We want to write to wall, light, long, wide indeed. Um, it will now list all the devices that we have here. <clears throat> um, not all device types that exist overall, that would be overkill. Um, so I even even if I only have one device up, like for example the wall heater, it will still allow me to select all wall heaters. So, wall light long wide. I want to write the value of this thing uh, on. Turn it on and aha! Uh -huh. Okay, it's a bit weird that I'm turning... Have you seen that? Have you seen that? I will make the field of view even more ridiculously wide. See, that thing reacts immediately. But this thing uh, is waiting for its value and then is acting. So that's why there's some delay here. Stupidly, I will always have an error here if I don't um, select an output and such. Or can I just do this? No, I can't. Both have to be on. Um, maybe just write a different value then. Not whether it's on, but... Oh, that's the only values I have. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, let's just use the log value then. I can also demonstrate by uh, this way what this does. I can turn this on and off manually. And this one, I cannot. You can see, cannot interact as device is currently locked. Now we have seen what the lock value does. So why can I turn this off, even though the switch would like turn them on, right? Well, there's a huge difference that you can now observe here between um, working with the logic chips and working with the uh, programming language that we will uh, that I will talk about later, hopefully in this video. Um, but I have some uh, some good videos up where I thoroughly explain how to do the programming and what things you need, what you have to set up. So if you want to decidedly learn that, uh, you should like, skip this video because I'm probably not going to go too in depth uh, here. I'm not sure yet uh, in this series. Um, well, okay, the big difference that I'm talking about is um, the writers they will write a value only once. It's not like this thing has a zero or a one in its mind right now and then constantly <laughs> vomits that at the target device. No, it does so only once. That is the reason why I can now uh, change these, or rather this is the reason that these are now in an improper state, even though I decided they shall be on. And if I use instead uh, the MIPS programming, then uh, most of the time we will actually use a main loop, meaning there's gonna be a marker that's called start, colon that's how they are written and then uh, you will say jump start and that is your main loop and there's also a yield command between those two uh, but it's uh, beside the point the point is you would have a main loop and then it would the thing would do the things again and again and again which means that uh, if I would then yeah you know what this means the light would be the way I want it to be alrighty now we can turn the light on and off which saves us some electricity, but now we are wasting some for this, for the uh, logic switch uses... Oh, null watts! Oh, right, that's, that's the switch. That's what was wrong. Um, uh, that didn't work. I can also browse backwards from here to the kit and thus to the other devices. Ex actually, I thought so. Yeah, I can. So the batch writer, or batch reader, they all use the same electricity, I believe, 10 watts. So we are now wasting 20 watts to be able to turn off these 200 watts conveniently. And talking about convenience, let's make sure that this thing doesn't have to be triggered manually all the time when there's something to smelt, and put up some logic chips for that. How many do we need? Uh, let's see what we need. We need a writer, of course, which turns the thing on. Batch writer, logic writer, uh, logic writer. We need a logic writer. And we need a connection to that thing. Because currently we don't yet have one. I wonder what the chicks are doing.
My god, I didn't ex I didn't expect there to be a chicken right here. Shoot. Hmm. Maybe they also die off uh, when it's too cold. I'm, I don't know. I don't have much experience with them. So, one of the main things when you're programming something or building some logic stuff, uh, see to that your wires are correct because that should be your first debugging uh, thing because it's the least complicated to look at and it's the most common error, I think, the most common mistake to make that you just forget about, about those connections. So let's connect that. Done and done. Oh, yeah, the wind turbines. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, it's just not going to fit. It's like a wall, you know? Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero. One hundred watts. Two lights are being counteracted by the presence of the wind turbines. In other words, we are losing power. Constantly losing power. Input, output. The logic writer will write a value to whatever I decide. So let's see what we want to decide. The output device shall be the arc furnace. There it is already. Now the arc furnace is selected. Uh, one common mistake here when using the logic chips is that one might confuse what's written on the left, which is currently selected, the arc furnace, and on the right, which, which will be the next thing. I mean, it's obvious. I explained that to you. It's completely simple. But, you know, humans make mistakes and that's an easy mistake to make. Now, which value do we want to write? Uh, well, I can look that up. But I know it's the activate value. Here, that's the button. And this also allows us to turn the currently, smelt, uh, currently ongoing smelting process off by just setting activate to zero, if we wish. And okay, down here we have the slots. See, we will also need a slot uh, reader because I want to react to whether something's in the arc furnace. Um, there's another thing that can also do, I believe I can use the recipe hash, uh, which refers to the thing that is currently being smelted. And I can check whether that is zero or not. And I think this will actually give me information in regards to uh, what's being smelted or what's in the input slot. I'm not sure. Someone gave me that tip. Um, um, so maybe we don't actually need this, the, the, the slot reader. But what we would read from the slot reader is then whether it is occupied, you know? And uh, when we read the recipe hash, that would be a value like minus 173568 or so, um, which is not a, a logic value like 0 or 1, but I believe that any value that is um, um, 1 or greater, or is minus 1 or greater, I mean minus 1 or more negative, will be interpreted as true, and 0 will be interpreted as false. I think so. So we could just read the recipe hash and just write it to the light's state. So we could just write to the light and say, hey light, you're on now. And then the on value would get a value like minus one, seven and so forth. And then the light would be on. I think so. Um, I'm pretty sure I've done that, for example, with the daylight sensor. Um, the daylight sensor, for example, reads the sun's vertical position. And I've just read that value, which changes uh, every game step. 
because it's a decimal value um, so it uh, wouldn't just change from 180 to 179 and then would stay there for a while and then change to 178 but it changes all the time and so uh, I could use that to trigger the arc furnace at all times instead of just one time that's uh, that's something I tried it works Okay then, uh, we want to write the activate value. We have selected the activate value. And what value shall this thing write? Now we need a logic reader or a batch reader, depending on what decision we make. I will try the logic reader. Let's see, can we read from the Arc Furnace? Arc Furnace... Let's read the recipe hash. If that's true, uh, let's see if that works. Recipe hash. Or should we read the idle value? That would be weird. Because, let's say we read the idle value. Idle would mean that this thing is currently not burning, I think. You know? Uh, so it would read a 1 because it is currently idle and would write that here and would write that to the activate switch. This would then activate the arc furnace, but this then would result in that value, whether it's idle or not, to be turned off. Let's do that. Let's be funny. Um, so let's read whether it is idle. And then utilize that here. I have to select now this logic reader, which is tricky because we have another logic reader over here, no? No, we don't. I, else I would have to give them names. How do I do that, by the way? I didn't say that yet. With a labeler. You click on a thing, and then you can name it any which way you want. For example, uh, let's say light, uh, BV, BW. It doesn't matter what you type, I'm just using some simple name that doesn't require me to be fancy, you know? Um, batch writer and logic writer switch. And you have the arc furnace um, writer and arc logic reader. Arc logic reader is now our source, and the arc logic reader will read whether that thing is idle. So let's see what happens. Aha! So even if there's nothing to smelt, that thing will tell you that it is busy, that it is non idle. Um, what happens now if I toss something in pretty, pretty surely is that it will uh, give us um, lots of individual ingots instead of... Um, no? Oh, right. <laughs> Ingot spam, yeah! So currently not smelting now. Let's read the recipe hash, see if that helps. And turn it on. It doesn't work. Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, there's still some, some copper in there. Okay, what else can we do then? Export count, import count. Uh, import export count is um, whatever you have been have tossed in there, then we'll say one, two, or maybe it even counts the amount uh, per stack, isn't it? If a 50 stack would then count up by 50. I don't know, I've never used that. Prefab hash. 
error. Activate lock reagents. Hmm, is reagents maybe what will get us get the show on the road? No. Required power, idle. Yeah, no, now we're through. Okay, I, I guess I have to actually use the um, the, the slot reader. Well, let's use that then, well, no problem. Slot reader. How many connectors does this have? Three, so we're in the right place. When I use the auto-rotate key, see nothing happens. All is well. So let's screw that then. Input shall be the arc furnace. The slot we want to read there is the import slot. What other slots do we have? The export slot? Oh, that's the only slots. Okay. And which va variable do we want about the, the content of the import slot? Uh, we want to know the occupant hash, for example, or whether it's occupied. Well, that would make sense. The quantity, reference ID, sorting class. All of these things are meaningful just because you don't uh class i actually don't know what that is uh just because you don't know yet what that is so it goes in one ear out the other it doesn't mean that you're looking at spam here you're looking at something that is actually meaningful and important but uh you shouldn't you know try to swallow it right now so it's occupied this slot the import slot occupied of the arc furnace let's read that and okay there's a problem now what is the problem all oh, right, I changed, I removed the chip, and so um, this no longer works. You can see here it's trying to read the light. Uh, huh? No, it's like it's trying to read the arc furnace LW, the logic writer, you know. No, wait, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm talking gibberish. So that's the name of that thing, and um, it's currently trying to read nothing. So that doesn't fly. Let's just say slot reader and turn this on. All right. And now I can turn this off and that's the end of it because um, it will not see, uh, because the value that it would currently write has not changed, just like with the lights. Uh, so this thing doesn't write this value again and again. See, um, that's well, that can be a downside. Um, okay, now we have the automatic arc furnace. Let's uh, make use of that then. And all of this will be smelted automatically. We don't have to worry about that anymore. <sighs> Let's look at my little to-do list here. Wind turbines we have. Water storage extension, eggs, chicken, logic chips, arc furnace. Yeah, the next step would actually be the furnacing. So let's do that then. I'm not sure if I want to... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, let's just throw everything down here in the corner so that I have some free space. I will, this time, I mean, um, I usually have my order first, I make, make steel or solder, but this time I will start with uh, with this stuff, with the uh, electrum. Then we want to also make solder. That one pipe I should put up, goddammit. And, um, steel. Huh. 
so that's one batch of steel, that's another batch. Then, uh, soda. Oh, see? And now it just was done, and it's burning again. So now we have an automatic arc furnace with an input stack, tosses all everything in here, very convenient. Good stuff, and it was easy to do. I mean, relatively easy. And electro. Okay, let's go smell some stuff. Is everything in here all right? We have 21 degrees. Oh, maybe we should deal with the plant. Right. Um, and open the helmet. I need some refilling here. Air tank critical. So, like I said, uh, we have uh, a seed now. Let's pick that seed. Now I have it here, just like it was a bag of seeds. Now I have three. Everything is restored. But still, we have the plant, and actually two potatoes. Interesting, even though we didn't really use that, that light up there. So the mass conditions with, with just windows uh, seem to be sufficient. So click, then we have a potato, and click again. Now we have two potatoes. Now we can place both of these down, then I have two potato plants. Since we are not starving exactly, I mean, we have still plenty of resources, the easy mode is really easy. It's, I mean, for beginners, it's a challenge, I guess. Uh, it's interesting also for advanced people because then they can focus on, on the things that they want to experiment with and such. But, um, uh, you know, a season station here usually plays harder difficulties. Okay, and then we have a microwave here. I don't actually know. Can I now eat this potato somewhat? No, I cannot. Because either I eat it or I don't. It's like uh, it's not like with the water where I drink a little bit or not. Uh, but here I eat either the whole potato or nothing. So um, I don't want to eat that now. I want to demonstrate the microwave. And now we can om nom nom away. Here, just like with the water, when you're totally hungry and this value is at zero and so you're taking health damage, it is advisable to just click Hydration critical. shortly and then do the actual eating because this shortly will then already um, stop your health from dropping. Because right now I'm not eating. I'm only eating now, in this moment, when I'm releasing. Yeah, and food will decay eventually and for that you can put up a fridge. And there are two types of fridges, etc. All of that is in here. There are even chickens. Mm. So let's go smelt then, I guess. Oh, and the thing I haven't done yet, which you don't need to, but because the default is that there's autosave, I should save. Right, I remember. Didn't I say that this pipe would burst? Currently we have 69 degrees. The last time I checked, uh, that was like 250. So yes, it is cooling down. And if it cools down enough, then this stuff will become liquid, etc. Um, so that's not what we want. So let's make some... Uh, what's its name? Electro. That's what we want to manufacture. See, uh, this will now seem very complex, very complicated to you, but for me it's completely routine. I might only look up some number here and might fumble maybe the way I click this, but it's you will be sleepwalking this stuff, I promise you. It's only at the beginning it's so much at, on all fronts at the same time. Once you have taken your step into this world, things are still funny, com fun complex, but they're not overwhelming. And at some point then, uh, well, then you're looking, then you're waiting basically for new developments on the on the beta front and such. But I haven't yet played all of it, even after a thousand hours. I don't have rockets yet. Didn't make rockets yet. Rocketeering is quite a complex thing. That's why I didn't do that yet. So we have two factors that we need, to, we have three factors that we need to consider when we're making something. Actually four factors. Let's demonstrate the fourth factor um, by going to Astroloy, which is another alloy that you can make. Here the advanced alloys, they always look like this which kind of reminds you probably of um, 
of the cooling rods in a nuclear power plant and there will actually be a nuclear power at some point in the game. You can even find uranium already, um, but it doesn't do anything. And guess what? It's gases, you know, your uh, ore always comes with some gas, uh, is pollutant, lots of pollutant. So that makes sense, I guess. Because, uh, was it plutonium? I think plutonium is even one of the most potent poisons uh, there are. Not just because of its uh, radiation, but also otherwise. Toxicity, actually. I think so. Anyway, blah. So, you know, here we have this and we have multiple factors to consider. One of them is the music is changing in ways that I don't like. Okay. Um, so, one of them is which furnace can we use? Because there's also an advanced furnace, like I said in the last video. And here we can only use the advanced furnace. That is one factor. Another factor is, what is the mixture? What things do we need to make that happen? And then we have pressure and temperature. So there's four factors that go into this, but you can already see um, that this one only needs three factors. Advanced furnace, furnace, both of them work. And um, the uh, numbers here are just repeating. So it's, um, it's the same thing. So what do we need? We need some pressure, but not as much pressure as we currently have here. I mean, uh, okay, uh, the pressure that I would produce now by putting some stuff in here to get that thing hot enough would ultimately uh, be much higher than what I want for my electrum. So yeah, let's empty out the furnace. And up here we can get what is coming out there. But what we also get is a bit more nitrogen than is actually coming out there because we, of course, also measuring our own exhaust. Let's demonstrate that. See? Nitrogen. Let's look at what the furnace actually shows. Here we can see what's in there and if it's currently processing something. Here we can see the pressure, which is now slowly decreasing it goes up to 60 megapascals and then this thing will explode ridiculously so basically this whole station would be completely destroyed parts of it even gone and this is how you ignite the furnace once the furnace is already burning you don't need this you can push it as many times as you want uh, it doesn't hurt but um so if you for example fill in some you also have an input gas pipe, you know, you don't have to put in uh, the ices that are put in there. You can also put gas in there. And if you put in there a f fuel gas, like for example from my... Um, here, you have seen this uh, canister holder, right? I showed that to you earlier in this video, which we also have for the gas canisters. And if I just take one of these pipes and stuff it here, and then add the gas canister holder and then I can just stuff here my gas canister into that holder and then this uh, this uh, gas will stream in here and if uh, by whatever means I fill this thing here with some pressure with fuel gas until it's like here you know until the needle is like here then you might think that's all right but it's not because if it's not yet burning then guess what happens if you turn that on the needle will go very quickly and and that's the end of your station yes Another fun way to blow things up is to overpressurize these canisters. They even they explode even more violently, I think. All right, let's get rid of that stupid pipe. Uh, let me tell you what I'm planning here. Uh, more of these radiators, of course, and then this comes back down here. And there, I will just have another active vent. And then I ju can just pump the station air through that. And later I can also automate that so that it turns on and off automatically. Step by step towards a better world. Okay, now I can demonstrate the problem with the... Wait. I tossed down the, uh, the uh, girdle kind of thing. Uh, where was that? Was that indoors? I think so. That's where I have my volatiles. Damn. Ah, yes. It's saying that I need to drink some. Let's do that then. Uh, 
Oh, do we have pollutant? We do. It's not refilling because it is showing an error. We have some reserve bottles over there and I can just scrub the air and then we're fine. So, not a problem. But that's the only way to drink. Actually, there's also the water fountain thing. I've never done that. I'm curious. Bottle filler, water purifier. I've never seen that thing either. I've heard of it, but I've never seen that. Purifier sounds as if that could be the solution to that problem over there. Let's manufacture one and then return outside. And I mean only one. Oh. A dude? Alright. Oh, <laughs> the individual uh, thingies that we made there. So now that the sun is up, like I about, was about to say, I cannot demonstrate what happens when you're trying to fill, when you're trying to fuel the furnace, uh, and what you can do to make that happen. Um, let's see. I will remove this and open that, and then we know we need some volatiles and some oxygen. So I will take some volatile, and now it's in my hand, and now it's not. Instead, you see some gas moving around because that's what happened. The sun melted that in my hand. So, how do you get that in there in time? Uh, you can think of this digitally. So, either it is there, or it is not there. There's not a, a, that's not a half volatile thing. So, if I'm fast enough, I can certainly stuff that in there. But there is an alternative solution. And that solution is as follows. You see to both of your hands being full. Then you get close to that thing. Not so close, though, because then you will be confronted with a bad physics implementation on the face of, on the case, uh, Rocketworks did a really bad uh, mechanics implementation there. Because um, if I toss this down now, then it will just manifest between me and the furnace, but there's no space there, so it will push me back violently, and this will then damage my spacesuit a lot. Which is ridiculous, man. Oh, have you seen that? Why is that actually happening? Is there some burning process going on in there? I don't know why that actually opened up again. Maybe because there's already something in Yeah, 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 of course. There's still some gas in there, and that gas is warm enough. I mean, it was warm enough. Now it's hot enough. And so that melted the ice, and so the entry was opened up again, because the processing took place. Okay, we need Electro. What does Electro need? A pressure of 800 to 2.4, that's the trick with this thing. And then a temperature of 600k to 100,000k. Uh, you don't need to know really that 600k uh, right now, that it is 327 degrees Celsius. Because when you point at the furnace, it will tell you how hot it is in Kelvin. So we need 600 to 100,000. Uh, they always have a range here, but you can remember the following. If the temperature maximum is... Um, 100,000, then this just means this and up. You know, 600 Kelvin and up is what we need. 800 to 2.4, 6 and up. What do we have? Eight, uh, two, 800 to 2.4, 6 and up. The conditions are fulfilled. However, now when I put in what I need to... Is the lever closed? Yes, because I don't want to smell that actually. Um, see, you can use this thing as the arc furnace, uh, like the arc furnace, and then uh, the content will just be sped out again in the in the ingot form, you know. But uh, I want to melt the mixture, both of them together. So now that I've put both of them in, you see that the pressure is now at 2.5, which is outside the parameters, and also the temperature has dropped a lot. Uh, if I open this va uh, valve here, this will drop the pressure, it will also drop the temperature, but it will drop the pressure stronger. So let's use that mechanism to our advantage. And then we can see it is green, and now we have Electro. Okay, that wasn't hard. What would be the next thing that we do? How, what's the temperature in there? Um, 700 is too low to make steel, I happen to know, but we can also look that up in a, in a minute. Um, I would like to do um, this stuff next, uh, solder. 
which takes, see the shape says, you, not advanced furnace, but you can use the simple furnace. I wish they would order this differently, because um, advanced furnace is always written here, but simple furnace is not always written here. So if this would be at the top, you would be informed more uh, efficiently. So, um, we need a temperature that is rather low. See, that's the trick with this one. And some alloys have, are less tricky, they have wider ranges, and some of them are more tricky on both the, the, the scales. You can see the pressure from 1 megapascal to uh, 100 megapascals, that's the equivalent to 100,000 uh, kelvins, as in 1 megapascal and up. But this one is in a narrow range. And uh, now when I put in the materials that are supposed to be melted, uh, this will draw down the temperature. And um, so um, that is actually a bit risky. I, I mean, I'm trying to say that currently it's too hot, but once I put the stuff in, it might not be. So let's put the stuff in. We need lead and iron, you know, half and half. The same for electrum, you probably saw that. You need half and half. So whatever amount you put in there, see to that both components have the same amount. 50 and 50 looking good. Is the lever closed? Yes. Now you will see that the temperature is dropping and if it drops it's green because um, I have iron in there and iron can meaningfully be melted to iron ingots. That's why it's green. And for whatever reason the advanced furnace is not showing you a green light. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why. Maybe that's a bug actually. So we see that the temperature is dropping and uh, we now have 50-50 iron lead. So why is this not green? What's happening? What is wrong? We need 660 Kelvin, I believe. No, 350 to 550. But we have 590. So it's too, co uh, too hot. What can we do about this? We can do multiple things. For example, we can just put some water in there or something else that is non-reactive non but cold because all of this is ice and ice cools down or just increasing the gas volume in there with something that is not itself already hot will of course then spread out the thermal energy amount that is therein uh, to the larger amount of gas and uh, therefore it will then be effectively colder as a summary statement. Just like in reality. Now I can put in some more oxygen for example. Let's analyze what's in there. Uh, there's some oxygen in there. Uh, still some volatiles for whatever reason. I don't know. It's probably a very low value. That's sometimes some rounding error visible or not. Doesn't matter. Um, if I would put in some volatiles now, they would be then uh, mixing with the O2 and there would be more burning. I don't want more heat though. I want it colder. So it would be meaningful for me to put in some more oxygen or oxide which has oxygen and nitrogen, because this then would not contribute to, the poten to a potential reaction, because the only potential reaction right here would be volatiles and oxygen. By the way, here we have N2O, that's another gas, and this, uh, together with volatiles, in a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, is the most potent fuel you can have in the game. There are two different fuels, and that's the other fuel. I have actually never dealt with that fuel so far, for whatever reason. And when you uh, do, when you work on rockets, you can use both fuels, but guess which fuel gets you further. Uh, and it's more fickle, because if you mix that and heat it up to 50 degrees Celsius, kaboom, then it ignites. Don't even have to spark it. I think the normal fuel also has some uh, ign ignition temperature, but uh, whatever. So I want to cool this down. which uh, I can do now, for example, with oxygen, with oxide. Uh-huh, this works. Now let's try water. Let's try water. Is this stronger cooling? I'm not sure. Probably. Aha! We have solder! So now we can start with the programming stuffs. Oh, that was a... <laughs> that was precise. Um, but no, first I want to make steel. For steel, all you need is make the motherfucker hot and go. Steel. Steel is the easiest stuff to make, really. You can see here we need 900 Kelvin and up, so that's relatively hot, but not so very hot. Um, some things need, like, uh, I don't know, 
much hotter than this. Okay, this needs 900 Kelvin and up, and 1 megapascals and up. And when I heat it up to that temperature, I'm gonna have that pressure anyway. And you can see the upper limit is not given, so very, very easy to make. The trick here is the mixture, 3 quarters, 1 quarter. And I already, I already prepared that, so... Now, uh, what I wanted to say, uh, dangerous, uh, when you stuff something in here, that cools down the furnace. And if this thing then is processing what you have stuffed in there, like iron for example, and it's cooling down and cooling down, it might cool down below, uh, like, uh, I'm not sure, 300 Kelvin? And then it will stop processing. Because then it doesn't have any longer the power to melt that into the, into the chamber. And then you're stuck and your furnace is bugged. What you can do is you can deconstruct that and everything will be reset, which is stupid of course. I hope they change that, that the contents will then spill out in the atmosphere and so forth. Um, but what you can also do is just you pipe in some hot gas, because with that you heat it, heat it up again. And by the way, if you're on Venus or Vulcan where it's very hot anyway, uh, then the, this thing will heat up just from environmental, environmental heat. So let's heat this thing up and step on the gas. There should be a lot of oxygen in there already, so let's focus on the volatiles. There should be way enough, now you, you hear that thing rumbling, and You can see it from afar. It's a little star. Not right now, because it's still rather cool. By the way, uh, this heat, this uh, expression here is not so much related to heat, but uh, rather to pressure. Or to both, a combination of them? I'm not sure. Anyway, now let's make steel. You see that the pressure keeps increasing, even though the temperature is decreasing, which of course reduces the amount of volume that the gas would take, because there's more and more gas in there, because the ores are degassing. And what we also know by now is that it is uh, too cold to make steel. We need to put some more fuel in there. Yeah, you can put... Oh. Huh. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We think that our smelting results will not be blown uh, blown uh, around. Uh, so it's too cold. I have to put in some more fuel. Wha it's not too cold. Why is that not too cold? Nine hundred Kelvin. Right, six hundred Celsius. Stupid me. We're done. And uh, now let's just uh, do this. Uh, I'd like to put in some more fuel, uh, because currently all fuel in there is burnt. But what does this thing look like with unburnt fuel coming out of the chimney during a storm? Let's do that. Okay, things are getting a bit dangerous. If this were the advanced furnace, that wouldn't be a concern, because you could just turn on the pump that is built in, and it would empty the chamber rather quickly. Even that is hardly visible during the storm. But, um... Uh, but with this furnace you have to actually take care. Maybe I waited too long and that's not really interestingly burning. Or the storm blows it. I don't know. I thought there would be some fire streaming out of there. Disappoint. 
Anyway, we see here the pressure is increasing. Oh, it's not? Okay. Because it has already burned through enough of the fuel or the, uh, the pressure differential between the inside and the outside is so large that the pressure is decreasing very quickly. So the increase of pressure due to the process, to the burning process, versus the decrease by this thing being open is balancing itself out. Anyway, now we have steel and we have all that other stuff. Let's go indoors instead of suffering the storm. And the battery? It should be rather full, shouldn't it be? Let's enjoy the storm. Mmm, isn't that cozy? And I am having a hygiene problem, don't I? Well, let's just strip them. Take off the suit. Helmet and this. Current hygiene increasing, no suit or helmet. Current mood increasing because I'm in a room. We have a third person view, by the way. Oh, that's that's a thing, okay. Okay, uh, what's happening here, this jitter is not a calculation problem, it's rather the camera not knowing what, it, what distance it shall take, you know. Yeah, it's a bit weird that you cannot look from the front, really. <laughs> Doing metrics, yeah. Yeah, bullet time. Okay, let's do something meaningful then. We can now uh, put that stuff away for our burning. What was that over here? Egal, that doesn't matter. And make water purifier. The chip. The IC10 chip. That's the only chip so far. There will be more chips later. Um, with various capacities of uh, source code and um, then uh, the chips will also have to be protected from environmental uh, from the environmental situation I think uh, but currently you can just have them out there in the storm or in a vacuum or um, on 600 degrees of vacu uh, Vulcan atmosphere or something doesn't matter this will change so you know early access solar electrum and steel And the steel, we have 400 grams. I will make nice stacks from this, this thing. 100, alright. Huh. Only one chip for now. What can you put, do with such a chip? Well, you can put source code on it and run it. And what you put in the source code is your choice. So if I want to turn on the arc furnace and control the lights in the door, um, well, if, as long as there's enough space, I can put that on one chip. It's my choice. Water purifier. Hmm. How does that work then? I've never do, done this. It's a new device to me. Obviously, on the input side, we can see that there will have to be water. On the output side, there will also be water, and uh, I think... Oh, let's read up on the purifier, actually. And now we need the housing, because the chip needs to run in a place where it's, it needs to be stuck into something. Like, like in a computer, you know? I see housing. Purifier. Cleans polluted water and outputs water. The purification process requires charcoal. Okay, I never had that. Which can be added to the machine via the import bin. That would be this opening here. The processing, okay, uh, it's sadly Rocketworks uh, uh, spelling, but particularly the grammar is a bit super. I hope they will do some thorough uh, pass later because it's ridiculous that they always confuse the its and its with and without ap apostrophe. Um, 
but I mean, I, like I, uh, I mean, I, I'm singing the praises of Rocketworks often enough, but I'm not a fanboy. When something's shitty, I'm saying that it's shitty, and that's the way it should be, you know? Uh, what good is a praise? What good is a smile? What good is being friendly towards each other if it's forced, right? The processing throughput can be improved by increasing the gas pressure of the input pipe relative to the gas pressure of the output pipe. They're saying gas pressure, even though it's not a gas pipe, well, that works like this. Uh, if you have a pipe uh, or a container, for example, and there is, or a pipe is just a container, and there is some uh, liquid in there, it will basically have zero pressure. But uh, there will always be pressure. So uh, this will then gas off some of its substance, uh, H2O gas, for example, like we had in this room at the beginning of this video, so that, so that there will be pressure. Um, and uh, that's the gas pressure they're talking about. That's why they're explicitly saying gas pressure here. And you can actually pump gas, decidedly gas, into liquid pipes. There are valves for that and such. We haven't talked about that yet at all. Um, okay, um, that can be increased. So charcoal, let's look at that stuff then. Looks like coal, I guess. Let's compare. Oh no, it looks different. Coal, charcoal. Char as in charred, burned. Charcoal is a lightweight black carbon residue produced by heating biomass in an arc furnace. By heating biomass in an arc furnace. For example, the eggs were at 86% damage because at some point they decay, the fertilized eggs that came with my lander. And if I would have waited longer, they would have all turned into biomass. That is some greenish blob. And um, yeah. If I would have turned that into the arc furnace, I see now, they would have turned into charcoal. It contains less energy potential than or coal, but can be used as a basic fuel source. Charcoal can also be used, can also be substituted for coal in alloy recipes. So I can use that also for, for steel. Uh -huh. And what they haven't written here yet is that I can also use it in uh, as a filtration um, substance for the uh, water purifier. If we wait long enough, then this will actually turn into biomass. We can already see, already see damage at 3%, and that is what they're talking about. I actually have no clue if, uh, when the damage is very high, um, if this is, has less nutritional value. I'm not sure. Uh, you can see here also, will decay completely in 7 hours. Those are real-world hours. We can see now, provides 7 nutrition. Um, let's just leave this here. Maybe later we can see, even though I haven't eaten anything of this, that the nutrition value will be lower. I'm curious. Seven, 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 seven. Would be nice if that would happen automatically when the sun is up, huh? Well, let's do that then. But we need also a computer. There are two kinds of computers. There's the stationary computer and there's the laptop. Why can I not use my light? Oh, because I'm not wearing my spacesuit. This is, see? I mean, they get you out of your spacesuit now with this new mu mood and um, dirtiness stuff and so forth, um, which is still in its infancy, so there will be more on that front, definitely. Um, but this then also means that you have to put up some lights. Like I keep preaching, don't use your flashlight all the time, or rather, don't carry this, this thing with you. Um, put up some lighting, make it feel natural, you know? So, what do we need? We need iron and copper. Not surprisingly. Where will we put the computer? Where will we put the chip? I would say we put the chip here, because one of the most important things I intend to control, that's me, uh, is... Um, this here, the cooling. Actually, let's make the active vent to complete that cooling cycle. And then also test it. Now we have more uh, of these um, radiation thingies out there and also more pipe. The pipe itself also uh, has exchanged, so yeah. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that many of you appreciate the um, or like the thought of playing now with its temperature stuff and the gas uh, stuff because that's, that's just fun. That's just a really fun comp... comp oh, motherfucker. What, what, what's happening? 
right, computer, of this whole uh, simulation. For example, when I'm in this uh, room here and we have 23 degrees and uh, I toss down some ice over here and I go over here, then I will uh, see the pressure increase slowly, I will see the air streaming, I will see the temperature in here drop, even though over here it has already dropped. And the same for, for these pipes. Um, now we can cool down stuff by piping some, some gas through this. That is fun. That is one of the most fun aspects of this whole thing. And interestingly, that's just what I was talking about in my previous video uh, when I said that atmospherics, I believe, will certainly be a part of games in the future that have nothing to do otherwise with uh, atmospherics, like shooters, for example. Um, because uh, that is that's indeed, I mean, this most this much fun aspect that I'm talking about here is um, uh, is uh, is exactly that. Coincidentally, I mean, it could have been the electricity, which is not so very interesting in comparison, maybe. But it's this, and it's not so complex to implement, depending on how far you want to go. So let's test the cooling. I will first set this to... Now let's talk again about this button here, set inward, set outward. What do I have to switch to pump from the pipe into the room? Nothing. It is already set. See, um, there is a way for you to remember what the setting here is. This is, by the way, the mode variable. If you use, uh, if you're look, looking at the logics in the stationpedia and in the programming, uh, and many uh, uh, devices have a mode, so it's like the setting variable or the on variable or the open variable, um, a some pretty common thing. And this is the mode, and the default mode is zero. I mean, it makes sense that we're starting at zero, right? Uh, I mean, okay, maybe you're used to starting uh, starting to count at one. And then comes two and three and so forth, so forth. But in IT, we usually start at zero with good mathematical and other reasons. But I will not go into that now. I think I explained that in another video. Um, for some reason, my hair doesn't cast any shadow. I already reported this, but I guess I overlooked this. Uh, anyway, mm, so uh, the default would then be not one instead of one and two, uh, but zero for for zero and one. So there can be the mode zero and the mode one. And why would the mode zero, the default mode here, why would that be uh, the one that pumps into the room? Well, the most primary use of these active vents is here in the airlock. Now imagine uh, you're in, in, the, in the real world and you have a device here that sucks the room dry and kills you by there not being any oxygen. That's bad. So the default should be the harmless mode. And that's how you can remember that. There's also where you can see here the red button. When it's red, it means it's in a dangerous uh, state. That was a bit tricky to distinguish when it's red, which button is which. Then you have to really point at that thing. So, uh, this is now pumping into the room and so is this. Because it's now uh, blue and harmless and pushing inward. Nothing's happening because the pipe is empty. But, let's see what happens when we pump that. 24 degrees in the room. It's actually not cooling down much. Uh, main reason probably being, we can see here, the outdoor temperature is 10 degrees, so the differential between what's in the pipe and in the outdoors is very little. So we can't really see uh, that it is cooling, but it is cooling. Ah. <laughs> well, it, it is cooling, but uh, the overall room might be getting warmer for whatever reason. Maybe these devices themselves, which are currently on and therefore also having more waste heat than usual, I guess, if they have any waste here when they're not turned on, uh, are contributing more heat than we're actually getting out of this cooling system. However, let's turn off this vent which pumps the pipe dry. And then turn it on again. Oh ha, what's happening? See, now we are forcing the gas to stay longer in the pipe, and so it has more effect. The pipe should now be relatively empty. Uh, but uh, the more the sun goes down, the more the cooling effect should kick in because of the temperature differential. If a Pressure's dropping, 40 kilopascals. 
pressure in the pipe is increasing, 5 megapascals. There's actually some liquid pollutant in there, we can already see there's pipe stress. Oxygen low. Oh, and I don't have oxygen. But now we get cooling. This seems like a completely way too weak uh, cooling system, but I have uh, dealt with these in the past and uh, it should be relatively strong. I don't know why it's currently weak, maybe there are not enough radiators or maybe it is because of the temperature differential, I don't know. But in principle it's working. Maybe the problem also is that um, this thing is... Oh, wait. Well, okay, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, they shouldn't be in the same world slot. Maybe if this thing would be over here. But that's not a nice way to think about this whole thing, right? That's not how we should think. Oxygen low. Low pressure. Oxygen critical. Oxygen low. Oh, I understand. They were holding each other in balance. Let's turn that off then. Now the pressure is increasing and all that cold air is coming back in. Cooling the room down. Not by much, but it's cooling. Yeah, okay, the computer. Where will we put this? Um, not here, because there shall be the out, the, the door. My hygiene doesn't seem to be any problem any longer. Um, see, well, the stars have descended, for we haven't eaten uh, the highest quality food. Let's see these stats. I haven't analyzed those yet. Player stats. Food quality, okay. Not great, okay. Mood is increasing. Good hygiene in a room. Hygiene is increasing. No suit or helmet. You can also take a shower. I haven't done yet that yet. That will then pollute the water and so forth and so on. Um, I'm curious. But I will not stuff that into this room. This is just our starter room with everything. And we want to try things out and get things going. But ultimately a station should have proper rooms and a corridor and purposes. There should be an electricity room and all of that. Which I myself have actually never done. But I want to do that. And so maybe I'm going to do that in this series. Seriously? So. Um, 22 degrees. Where will the computer be? Here. Let's put it right here. So uh, there will be. There are two computers. One is the stationary one here, which has its upsides, and the one is the laptop. I cannot make the laptop right now because um, that requires these thingies to be upgraded. Why well, this? This one, you know, with which I then produce the laptop. For the upgrading, I need alloys that I currently do not have. Um, that I have to create with my... Um, yeah, with the furnace. So uh, the laptop can be taken anywhere, and then you can just take the chip and stuff it in the laptop, and then program the chip, and then put the chip back into the housing, housing so that it can run the station, or whatever it's supposed to run. Or for example, into your, into your hard suit, a space suit that has actually a chip. Uh, which can, for example, like I said in the last video, automatically turn uh, on and off your... Um, oh, I don't have those right now. Uh, the, uh, the filters and can open and close your helmet depending on danger and temperature. Um, that's what you can do. Uh, so that would be the laptop. But this thing, which is stationary, you cannot take uh, everywhere, but you can just select which of the uh, of the cable network um, housings, chip housings, you want to address, and then you can directly work with that. That is more convenient. So both of these have their upsides. But we're actually not yet done printing stuff, because the computer is currently just an empty shell, ah, and it's not powered. It needs, a, it needs a, a motherboard. Since we are talking about space stuff here, we will not put some Asus board in there which uh, for some Omni computer and install Windows, which is apt here on Earth, but we have to deal with cosmic radiation and stuff, which is not yet simulated, but I'm saying that is why we would have dedicated boards for a certain purpose. So let's see what boards exist. 
we have the sorter motherboard you have uh, the sorter device is similar to the stacker uh, looks similar uh, it has two uh, shoot inputs uh, it has one shoot input and two shoot outputs and then you can use the sorter motherboard in a computer to define uh, how that uh, sorter should behave and the user interface is horrible but it works gets the job done then we have the rocket control motherboard I have only seen screenshot of the uh, screenshot shots of that because I haven't yet dealt with rockets. The logic motherboard, which is similar to the logic chips, in that you can say uh, if this device is having this value, then set that thing to something else and so forth. But I have a video up of this thing. Decidedly, uh, it is completely bad. It's really shitty, and um, I'm pretty sure that Rocketworks will not actually polish this thing and fix it. It was probably an early attempt at getting some kind of um, programming language and convenience and uh, logic control into the game. Now we have the logic chips and, more importantly, the IC10, the MIPS programming language. MIPS is actually a real existing assembly language in the world, and the MIPS, the MIPS language in here, is not that. It's, an, uh, it's a customized version of that. And then we have the IC editing motherboard. Uh, what's the problem? Yeah, well, there's more things that can cause an error. Uh, in this situation, I wish it would tell me what it is. It is that I cannot select anything to work with. So I have to put up the chip. So here's the housing. And then there's the chip. If it doesn't work, turn it off and on again. Now I have to cable this thing up. Uh, here we have uh, the data connection for the housing. And there's the power connection. And those are the only connections it has. Uh huh. Why is it still flashing an arrow? Oh, that is a bug. That's a game bug. So if I turn this thing on, it runs the code, but there's no code in there. You can see that here on the right. In the tooltip it says it has zero bytes. Uh, and, uh, and if I take this chip out and put it in again, it will run the code again from the start. That's important to know. But you can experience it easily, so it's not something you have to actually remember. Okay, that is our computer and that is our chip. So what do we do with all this crap? Let's uh, take a little example. For example, um, num, num, I uh, want to I want to show a value, and we have actually th this housing thingy here with my bald head. Um, actually has a value, you can see here, state zero. Um, that is not something that has a certain function, it's just a value. You can just set this value and look at it, and then you can see the value that you have set. So that can be used for debugging. It's pretty, um, pretty convenient. Of course, you could also use a console, which I have already explained in the first video, uh, with an LED to show a value. Since uh, over here is my um, my cooling system and also the heater, I think it would make sense to put up an LED up here that will show me the current base temperature. If this programming stuff isn't your cup of tea and you find this boring now, sorry, then you have to skip it. Um, I have been a programmer for m several decades, so I absolutely love this stuff. Um, okay, then uh, now you see here those screws, which are similar to the screws that you know from the logic chips over there. Um, and I can now use the screwdriver to choose which of the devices... <laughs> Uh, of um, my current cable network shall be on that screw and then in the programming code in the, in the source code I can just use that device mm. so let's do that for example with that LED let's click here until I see the LED there it is now the LED is selected for screw D0 I will now go into the source code 
here is the source code editor and then I will say uh, write to device d0 setting 10 oops here the word setting is the logic value this is like the value on or the value open from lights and doors so let's export that so that the source code is in the chip and then you see it has already been run because of the export process it was triggered I guess it has 36 bytes now which is probably the amount of characters here and now we have the value 10 and I can, can also write to the housing itself I can say sdb setting 3 for example now I see state 3 so now that wasn't hard right so it would be nice though to have, an, to have a meaningful value there for example we already have a gas sensor this one but it would be a good idea to use that now for a temperature control because this one will be in this airlock so sometimes it will actually measure the planet atmosphere not the indoor atmosphere also it is on its own logic network and also on its own cable and also thus logic network here it is secluded so let's put up another gas sensor atmospherics no it's not a gas sensor it's a sensor it's a kit sensor sensor And I will just slap that down here. Oh no, that's a stupid idea. Let's say I put the sensor for the temperature in here. And then I cool the room down. And then I reach my cooling target temperature. Like, say, 20 degrees. Over here, it might be still 24 degrees. But the sensor will say, turn off the cooling. And then slowly the air will stream over here and the temperature will change and the whole thing might be turning on and off again. Uh, depending on how I implement this, I can also use some kind of range. I can say, once it's above 23, start the cooling. Once it's co as cool as 20 or colder, stop the cooling. So that it wouldn't turn on, click, 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 click all the time. You can also do that. Yes, it's programming. It's, um, that's what you can do there. So the sensor shouldn't be right here, I think. Uh, let's put it maybe... Um on the very far end will also not be right because if it's about temperature control and I want to go down to 20 and then this reaches 20 then over here I might already be at 18 or 9 or 15 or whatever efficiency this thing will, might eventually have so where would I put it in the middle put it in the middle let's say here uh, what's happening I've never seen that before. So that would be a daylight sensor, proximity sensor. Let's use a proximity sensor. I've never done this before. I want to see what, what the values I can read. I want to show the distance that I have from the proximity sensor on the LED. I can... Uh, th there is a radius button here that I can select. Is this thing not uh, powered now? I'm confused. Why is it saying liters? I think that's a mistake. Or is it supposed to be leaks? I thought we were in a scientific environment and not in an American one. But you can see here that you can set uh, some proximity threshold. Uh, let me zoom in. Uh, let me zoom in here. And when I get beyond that threshold, then pop, this thing becomes green. Uh, and you can uh, then read out whether you are beyond that threshold. But I'm pretty sure that you can also define um, I can also read out the actual um, distance let's see so there's a proximity sensor let's put that on the other screw proximity sensor on D1 so let's um, S apparently is for saving so L is probably for loading. Load from D1. You can see here some helpful text. And you can each actually see two tips. This tells you what this does. And here you can see the list of all instructions that this has. It's not actually that many because many are systematically repeating. For example, there's SEQ, 
and s um, and e for example equal or not equal equal is eq not equal is ne there's also gt for greater or l T for less than or GE for greater than or equal and uh, then all of these would have their own command here and the same you have for S and for L and there's also some variation some other variation like like Z you can say is um, uh, greater than and then this is the value of which it is of which is then greater relative to which and you can also just say Z you can see here there's no other value here because that's already implied this means there's yet another multiplication of the amount of statements here, but you see that it's not ultimately that many. Uh, well, then we have here uh, potential values, I think, logic values, like um, volume of something, or whether a plant is mature, or the weight of something. It's just for, for looking up, you know, and you have seen that we can also look that up in the stationpedia. It depends on from which angle you're tackling this, you know, looking at the device and see what values it has or having some kind of other interest. And this um, is, um, these, are, these are slot values. You've seen X is for variables and SX is for slot variables, whether it is occupied. Now you have seen them all. And this one, what is that? That it, that it, transparency can pause the simulation <sighs> so now it wants us to load uh, into a, here it's saying register this R means register this, these are the variables you know it's not like in a basic programming language where you might be saying uh, let um, a be 10 or when it was slightly more sophisticated they were actually expressing which kind of variable type you're talking about let a dollar be um, this or actually the let was only early ages uh, then we just def uh, saying setting this variable to this or we were saying uh, define a dollar or whatever or in java you might then say um, final static public uh, string um, text you can also define it already or it's not final, then you can still write over the variable, or it's not static, so it is an instance variable, or it's not and so forth. But no, here you have uh, fixed variables, which are just numbers, R0, R1, R2, and so forth, up to R15. That's it. And now we're loading into this variable, R0, um, from screw 1, and what value do we want to load? A good question, what values does the proximity sensor then have? Activate. Now this is probably whether it's green or not. Quantity? Um, not sure what that is. Will be triggered if there's a player in the range of the sensor as defined by the setting dial. The quantity variable will show the number of players. You can configure the sensor to only detect players who hold the correct access card using a cartridge access controller in a handheld tablet. Interesting. So you can have an automatic door, but no, not everybody can get through it. But this whole security stuff is uh, still quite underdeveloped, because anyone with a tool can just crowbar themselves into whatever room they want to be in. So, yeah. Um, so what would be interesting for us now to try out, not this one, not that one. Should I explain these just quick? Um, See, um, I already we, we already had the batch reader, right? Uh, the batch reader was reading from all devices of the type that I had defined. And you can see here also a type. Uh, th this, that's the same type. So when I used that screw, I was actually defining this, uh, this name or rather this number because they are, this, they are the same thing. The computer thinks the numbers, but we can also use texts in our programming. Um, and this would then refer to that type, to any and all pro, uh, proximity sensors. We can also refer to a specific proximity sensor uh, by, ref by its reference ID. Just like the cable networks and pipe networks have some arbitrary number that is de defined by the gaming simulation, by the game simulation, uh, so has every single object in the game its own unique number, and that is the reference ID. 
but uh, instead of doing that, which can then become problematic, as evidenced by the airlock, if I deconstruct something that has been assigned and then I reconstruct it, the airlock will be broken for good. I have to actually destroy that board and put a new one in. That's a bug, but you know, that's the way it is. But also here, the screws of the housing, when I set the screw to refer to a certain object and then I destroy the object and then build it up again, the screw might still show me that name when I hover there, but it will no longer work because the screw was actually internally referring to the object by its objective reference ID. Again, that's not this number, because this refers to, to proximity gen sensors in general, but to the actual one proximity sensor that I have there. And this one is also referring to that now, by the reference ID. It, if I would now unbuild and rebuild that uh, proximity sensor, this would no longer work. And the same for the airlock. Um, then the prefab hash is, I think, exactly this. Here, prefab hash, prefab hash. So this number can also be read out. See, so now we have seen these and you can forget about them for now. Um, so we have the setting, that would be the dial, which I can read and I can also write. So I can set this thing to my liking via the programming and then react to whether something's in the vicinity. Or I can read the amount of players that are, I guess, in the vicinity. What I cannot read, uh, sadly, is the, the distance from the sensor, but that would kind of clash with the idea of a quantity, I guess. So. So there's that. Um, let's read the quantity. Quantity. Now the quantity is in my register R0. And now I will go and say, uh, you know, select with the mouse and or with shift uh, and then control X or control V or control C, the standard stuff. Uh, I cannot select multiple lines, only text in one line. This editor is quite limited but if you think about it this is uh, the, the unity 3d engine that they're using here and they are uh, every line is I don't know some kind of texture or whatever it is uh, its own individual object they implemented an actual source code editor in a 3d pro a gaming engine you know this is not you know, this, they are basically abusing the features to make this happen so we can be thankful that it has this level of uh, quality but what you can also do is just click copy which copies not what you have selected, even if you have something selected, but instead the entire source code and paste does the opposite. So into your actual computer clipboard, just like when you do this here and press copy. And then you can use just an external editor like Notepad++, which also has certainly some uh, uh, code highlighting, which you can download for MIPS for this game. Um, or you can just select assembly, which is already built into Notepad++, but it's not specific enough to this uh, particular flavor of assembly and then just program there and paste it back in here which is sometimes meaningful when you want to do some vast editing in here some larger uh, bulky stuff then you might want to do that anyway now we're setting superfluously the, the housing to the value 3 and we're loading so, so we can just forget about this um, and we are loading the quantity value from the proximity sensor and then we're writing into red into device d0 which is our um, uh, LED uh, into the value setting the value 10 now I want to write the value a zero confirm export huh I expected something different. Hmm. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Now, uh, we are in a situation uh, where something unexpected happens. Um, there are multiple angles to tackle this. One would be that I have not actually... Yeah, that's the first thing, like I said. The first thing to look for, is this thing wired up correctly? Does it have possi possibly a logic uh, out port? And I'm only connecting here the data, uh, the power port. But no, it doesn't make sense. This is a sensor, so it only has a data port anyway. Um, so that's not the reason. Then maybe the setting is the reason. Or maybe my understanding of how this thing functions is the reason. Or maybe it's something in the source code. So um, now how can, how can we find this out? Well, I would say the first thing we should do is we should write something into this register. Stupidly, the, the 
void is move like it is in assembly. This is not something Rocketworks came up. That is standard in MIPS and is standard in all of assembly as far as I've seen. I've been programming assembly back then in the 1980s on the Amiga. Um, it's called move, even though it should be called copy. Uh, you're copying this value into this register and afterwards then it has that value. Now let's see if it does that. Yes, it does that. So therefore, the value that we're getting there uh, is well, is this value being set to zero by this statement? Uh, since we are setting it to five here, we can now see that. Will that value be set to... Aha! So uh, the value is actually being overwritten by us asking for the quantity. So let's look up once again what uh, D1, which is the proximity sensor's uh, quantity value means. The quantity variable will show the amount, the number of players. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> Could this be a bug? Huh. I mean, I'm certainly now within the vicinity. It's green, but still I get zero. What's going on? I would say there's a bug here. And you might now think, since you're tra trying to learn still from, from what I'm showing you here, and you have lots of abstractions in your head, so you're trying to generalize, that you have just seen, aha, uh -huh, okay, the game is still quite buggy. Well, um, I'm actually taken aback by this experience here. Um, this is um, something I didn't expect. The logic stuff is very solid. But all right then. Uh, let's read a different value of this thing. Activate. This is also not just me trying to play around with this, but also debugging this, because um, I should now see a value. Uh, no, uh, export. Zero and one. Okay. So maybe the wiring is the problem. Is there possibly no wire connection here? This goes down here. This goes beyond uh, yeah, here. This is connected to here. That's also not a thing. That's also something you might overlook. But no, that's not the case. Okay, let's do something else then. We have a setting of three here. Let's just set the setting. If that works, then we know that this uh, is uh, correct. SD1 setting setting 2. Export. Oh! Oh, god damn it! I am so used to do to uh, to main loops in this thing that I completely forgot now that we don't have one. Of course, it executes this stuff only one time. So I'm over here starting the program. The value is zero, like it should be. Then I'm running over there and wondering why the value is not changing. Well, why should it? The program is executing and then it's done. That's what's going on. Man, stupid me. But that's, you know, force of habit. Um, just, you know, remember, you need your start marker, whatever you call it, doesn't matter what you call it. But then you jump there, and that's your main loop. And remember, put the yield statement in there right after this marker. This is basically true in all situations, so I'm not going to go about um, uh, explaining this now. Yeah, okay, let's explain it. Uh, the game uh, has to pause your code uh, at some point arbitrarily because you're just t putting too much load on the game simulation. So every, I think, 128 statements, it will... Uh, actual statements, empty lines wouldn't count, I think. It will uh, it force a pa pause. But uh, if you pause out of free will by using the yield statement, then um, you would know when it will do that and the game will be satisfied. The game's needs, you know? So, export. So let's try to change the setting. It is 2 now. Aha, it's flipping back to 2. I'm no longer in control. The computer is in control. Okay then. Stupid me. So, we remove this. And we want to write to the LED what we have read there. 
This will now not show up because the radius is 2, which is too low. But 3. Ah, how many people are in there, in this realm, in this range? 1, 0, 1, 0. So that's working. Nice, but we want to know something else. We don't want the, the proximity sensor. Hydration critical. Uh, daylight sensor we would use at some... What is this now? Well, this thing is trying to run whatever's on the chip. And it's referring to that, but that is no longer existent. It's ref here, we can see that. Error, unknown at line 7. If I look here, line 7 is reading from D1, and D1 is now unknown. Um, daylight sensor we're going to have at some point anyway. Occupancy sensor, gas sensor, motion sensor. Let's try the motion sensor. What does it do? So why can I not use this? Uh, I have to still uh, assign it doesn't know yet what I mean. Motion sensor. How does the motion sensor then function? Originally developed blah 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 motion sensor can be connected to logic systems for security purposes. The sensor activates whenever a player enters the grid it is placed on. So in other words, it doesn't detect motion, but it detects presence. Now you might think, hey, there was also an occupancy sensor. What does that one do? I'm pretty sure it detects whether you are in the room. So is am I currently in that box here? Yeah. And let's see what values it has, probably quantity and such quantity how many people are in there on probably whether something is in there zero or one then the the obligatory uh, type number you know that thing and the objective identity number which the screw is using and whether it's currently activated okay I don't know what on does then maybe it's the same I, I don't know whatever okay then let's move on to the occupancy sensor It's still green, but let me change room. Now you see me? Now you don't. Now you see me? Now you don't. Because it detects whether you're in the room. Oh yeah, right. Uh, and it was showing back there. Huh. Oh right, of course, it's a bug, so this is currently not executing, and the LED is not part really of the setup. The LED is just the LED, and no one is telling the LED what to do, and so it's not doing anything, it's just, it's not changing. Occupancy sensor, one. That looks like a zero over there. And now it's one, because I'm now in the room. All of that is straightforward. Now let's finally go to the gas sensor. Gas sensor. I am not sure why it's currently blinking. Error, incorrect logic type at line 7. <clears throat> well, the gas sensor doesn't have the logic value that I'm trying to read from it. And so, that doesn't fly. <clears throat> what values does it have? Uh, lots of them. The gas sensor has lots of values. Look here. And, well, but it's not really that much. Because we have different substances in the game. 
uh, and uh, the, this nitrogen and carbon dioxide and volat volatiles and um, you can see that all of them are listed here so I can see what the ratio is in the current gas mixture I can see for example is the CO2 ratio below like 1% then my plants will be and will have problems um, but I can also check for liquid volatiles you cannot check for frozen for whatever reason but you can check for for liquid Oh, and now the polluted water is in there too. Then we have, of course, the reference ID and the uh, prefab hash, I guess. Yep, there it is. And then we can see the pressure and the temperature, which are, of course, values that you're more thirsty to perceive, I guess, because they're not this complicated, whatever stuff. But that is something everybody can relate to, uh, particularly how warm is it. So let's show the temperature. And you will now be disappointed that it is showing this. It is showing Kelvin. No, Kelvin, it's complicated. No, it's actually not that complicated because all you have to do is you can, you know, uh, export. So the room temperature is okay. I did something wrong. Uh, right. Stupid. We have 25.41 degrees Celsius in here. Let's check that quickly with our tablet. Seems to be alright. Seems to be correct. I think there's even a constant in here for Kelvin, which I might be able to use. I'm not sure. Let's see. Kelvin. Uh, when you press enter in here, like you are used to in the uh, in the Stationpedia search, because only then it becomes effective, in here it becomes effective without that. And when you press enter, then you will actually change your source code. So that's something you have to keep in mind. That's buggy. That's uh, something that shouldn't be. I thought we already also had Kelvin in here. Uh, oh yeah, right. What is this? The library um, is... Uh, Uh, things that you or other people uh, have, uh, you can you know, like uh, you can store source code in there and then recall it. If you have something that nicely that you program, you can just keep it in your uh, local installation of Stationers and just put it put it back in here. Um, okay, so Kelvin, I mean everybody knows that. Uh, Okay, the Kelvin scale, I think I already explained that, it's the same basically as the Celsius scale, except it starts at absolute zero. Uh, so, zero Kelvin is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. So, if I have uh, 300 whatever Kelvin there and subtract this, then I get Celsius. That, it's that simple. It, mi it might seem complicated now, only yet another extra step, but you have to remember, you are currently seeing this for the first time, so you're trying to kind of put that in your head, but later, when you're just moving from A to B to C, um, based upon your knowledge, this will just be, uh, your fingers will be moving, you won't even perceive it, you know. Okay, what's happening here? I'm subtracting from R0 this value, and the result then afterwards, once this has happened, is written into R0. So it's not a problem that we're using the same register here. And yeah, this will add something and again, all the uh, commands are in here. So now we can see the temperature, but we also want to react to it. Um, I want to turn on my cooling system, depending on the temperature. That would be a nice thing to do. But um, yeah, let's do that. Let's first turn this thing on. Uh, so that it sucks the pipe dry, because the pipe needs to be sucked empty, uh, so that we have some benefit from the uh, from all the um, from the cooling, and also so that um, uh, so that the pipes, when they get too cold, because the stuff will get colder and colder, don't eventually burst. And yeah, actually, I told you uh, about the um, drains, right? The, uh, let's slap uh, a passive liquid drain on that thing, just in case I uh, fail this. There's actually room for two, I will make two, because they have a limited flow rate, a limited rate of throughput, and so I want to be sure that in case things go down, 
uh, that will empty quickly enough. So I will now add two um, passive liquid drains on that thing. We can actually make the cooling stronger now because we have steel. Therefore, we can make more of these nice radiators. Liquid? No, the, the gas ones. We will need more gold. Do we have more gold? Damn it. No, we don't. We need to smelt some. And it's already reacting. Haha, ha, the convenience. I slap those on. Oh. <laughs> now I would go here and then stack the airlock and then be cool and then plus I and yeah, everything's fluent. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't have my spacesuit on. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem. Let's once again look at the character stats. Good hygiene. I haven't even taken a shower. There's actually something like a space suit holder where you can place your backpack here with the with the with the jetpack and the suit and the helmet and you can wire that thing up with pipes and everything and then you have to have for gas tanks uh, you have to deal with all that stuff yourself but then uh, when you put your spacesuit on there it will be the battery will be recharged the things will be refilled very convenient that's something you'd like to do at some point right These things have an opening, and I think the orientation of the opening is not uh, meaningless, so let's make sure that it doesn't point into the station. So, any liquid in there, no longer a problem. I think we're walking very slightly faster than we're normally walking because our mood is good, because that's one of the effects it has. So let's strip again. And um... Okay, 26 degrees. Things are getting warmer because the sun is up. What's the outdoor temperature? I would like to know the outdoor temperature also. So I want to know. Tell me. I need an outdoor sensor then, gas sensor. Gold. Uh, I'm not sure what just happened. Oh, I was standing stupidly and so it was falling on my head and then falling into the machine, I guess. Hilarious. Uh, even more hilarious, that's not where I need the gold. And this is uh, not so nice that I have to push this thing on again manually, right? Well... Let's do two things now. Let's uh, make sure that this happens no matter what. Without the logic chips. Because we don't actually need those. So we can clean this up here. And I will show you how to activate the arc furnace. Of course you know how to do that, you know, assign it to the, to the screw, but no, I don't want to use the screws. I don't want to use the screws this time. I want to show you how you can do that without the screws, so that you're independent. Like for example, we can refer to this gas sensor with the screw, and if I re remove it and put it up again, then the code is broken. But if we do it right, but then if we put the sensor up again, the code will not be broken. That's something you'd be interested in, I assume. So, go to the source code, and now I have to address all arc furnaces on this cable network. Um, 
I can just look the up the arc furnace here and then I can just copy this number here. I can actually click here, then it will be copied. Now it's in my clipboard. And then I can uh, address that device, uh, the, the, all, div all devices of this type on the network. That is, by the way, batch writing. So we will not say S, D0 or something like this, but we will say SB, write batch. But uh, I can also use the name. And then I say up here, define uh, what I have just done is I have said to convert this thing into the number that was written right above it in the uh, in the stationpedia. I could also just say define whatever word I choose here is my arbitrary choice, and then put the number here. So this is equivalent to the number. This thing you would hash in the text. Uh, why have I written this? Because in programming, for the longest time, we have uh, ob object-oriented programming, and there we have classes and instances, where a class is, like, you write some source code, like, you define what a car is, how it behaves, it drives forward, backward, and it does stuff. And then you say, okay, now that I have defined that, I will now create an instance of that class. And then I will create another instance of that class. Now I have two cars and they have their own behavior. The behavior in principle is defined by the class, but the actual location of the car and who's going to be in it and where's, what the steering wheel setting is and how fast it is and so forth, that is a matter of the instance. Just like when here in the game, we have uh, the type arc furnace, but we can place, we can then manufacture of this type arc furnace, an actual instance arc furnace and then place it down there, which we have done. And place another arc furnace, there would be another instance. And then we can put gold in one and iron in the other. See, we have two instances where they're completely different. Uh, so I'm, since I'm a programmer, I, I will just uh, use uh, CLS as a short for class. So I'm defining the type arc furnace here. And what I can also do, if I'm so inclined, which I don't want to do right now, I can say that instance arc furnace and then, yeah, what would I write here? The name. I can use the labeler to give that thing a name, and then I can uh, convert that name uh, to a number. Now, this is a number we haven't yet spoken about, but we, we don't have to actually have to know about that mechanism at all. All you have to know is that you can use a statement here, like write to a device, batch, like to all devices of that type, but you can also just do this, write batch named. You can see here the gray stuff is changing. Device hash stays, name hash is added, but logic type and R something stay the same. So see, the N stands for named, and suddenly you have to also give the name. Indeed, then when I would say CLS arc, CLS arc and ins arc, and then let's say activate one, then I would activate the arc furnaces all arc furnaces on this current cable network um, that have this wicked name. But I just want to activate all the arc furnaces because that's, that kind of makes sense. So I will not use the named approach. And what I've just explained so quickly was um, how you can completely ignore the screws. Because if you define the type and define the name, then you say SBN, and thus you are automatically addressing whatever device you have there of the right type with that name. So if I deconstruct the gas sensor of a certain name, then I put up certain, the gas sensor again and give it that name, and suddenly it will work. Uh, a downside of this approach, though, is then you will not have an error. Because the thing will just see, okay, there are no devices of the type, I don't care. I think that's indeed what's happening. Now, anyway, and now I'm activating the arc furnace, hypothetically. And that's not happening. Why not? I'm not sure. Hmm. Right batch to class arc furnace. Activate one. That should work. I've done that a dozen times. Oh, right. So my mistake, see, uh, is this one. Item kit arc furnace. You have to remember that um, this is the thing that you produce with your manufactory. And then you can pr push the right mouse button when it's in your hand, and then you get your build ghost. And in some devices, uh, some things, the kit will have multiple things, and you use the mouse wheel to select what you want to build. But, of course, I cannot activate the kit it doesn't have an activate value, it doesn't even have a logic value, it's not a thing in the world. 
what I need is the structure. Structure Arc Furnace. And uh, this thing up there is uh, long, uh, is light, long, wide, I think. So we have to use the name Structure Light Long Wide. And the active vent is Structure Active Vent. And the wall heater is Structure Wall Heater. So yeah, it's rather easy. You don't actually have to look this up most of the time. And there we go, the thing is burning. And now we constantly do that, even if there's nothing in there, so we keep flashing up and uh, f keep flashing down. This might be annoying, and uh, I think it does even clack clack every time. So if that's annoying, you can use sensitivity once more. You can check if there's something in there, and while there's something in there, you activate it. And this will then be better than the logic chips, because the logic chip would write the value 1 only one time. Only when the value changes to zero or whatever else, it would then say, okay, let's write that value again. The chip, though, in its main loop, will just keep writing that value. It would think the thing is empty, so it writes zero, 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 or it will not write one, whatever. Uh, and when it sees that something's in there, then we'll write one, 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 if you have implemented it so. What I have implemented now is, of course, just an unconditional one at all times. Huh. Um, this one, the portable uh, scrubber, just like the portable AC, is indeed just the portable thing, or the portable variant of that is kind of a magical device. They have already adjusted these things somewhat, but um, they are way overpowered, um, considering the effort. Oh, it's already working. Uh, that you have to put in there. Um, now the question might be, can I also scrub the air with devices in the game? Yeah, of course you can do that. Dude, did you mean that question for real, or am I just, you know taking down straw man here. Um, of course you can do that. And uh, I will show you how later, not now. It would be nice if this light would turn on automatically when the sun is down. Let's implement that just quick. Uh, I wanted to make a gas sensor, a kit sensor and another kit sensor. One sensor for outdoor so we can see the outdoor temperature and one sensor uh, for the sun. The data sensor. The daylight sensor can sense multiple things. It can sense whether there's currently light in this grid and it can sense uh, what exactly was it? Let's see. Day sense. Daylight sensors provide data on whether the current region of your base is in sunlight. With that, they mean this world box. And report the exact solar angle. Note that the orientation of the sensor alters the reported solar angle. Not the vertical one. Uh, okay, depends if <laughs> which orientation is different. Um, while logic system can be used to offset it. So let's say uh, that thing is on the ground. Um, yeah, let's... Um, Let's just go into it. Let's look at the values here. We have the mode. I'm not sure what that does. Ah, we can see it here. You can see m default horizontal vertical. Ah, yes, okay. Um, you can see here that we can read the solar angle and the horizontal and the vertical. I believe that horizontal and vertical is just also the solar angle. Now you might ask, why is this then in here? Well, first of all, the, using the mode allows you to switch that value around, so you don't have to change the value that you're actually reading. But second of all, um, uh, this is a development history related. The game changed. At some point there was only the angle and then they thought, dude, you know, let's have a horizontal and a vertical angle separately, uh, but let's keep that in for, for backwards compatibility. And then they, I guess, added also, also the mode so they can switch this around. On, I don't know if that's meaningful, prefab hash reference ID, you know what that is, and solar irradiance um, explicitly says, um, is there currently sunlight in that grid or... Was it the shadow? Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, let's say the sun is deep on the horizon, but there's already daylight. Or let's say the sun is high in the sky. The solar irradiance level, I believe, will be exactly the same, because it will just be stronger or weaker depending on which moon or planet you're on. But when the sun is up or not up, uh, the value will either be, either be zero or will be whatever value that then is on that moon. Uh, but I think the shadow cast upon that area will uh, will, will make that will count. So it will be either zero or that value. 
Um, but um, what do we want to find out? What do we want to, do we want to find out whether there's solar irradiance in the slot or do we just want to decide whether the sun is up? I would say let's decide by sun. This would also allow us to turn on the grow light accordingly. So um, let's do that then. Uh, this is then the vertical angle of the sun. Or the horizontal one? No, the vertical one. Um, the vertical angle of the sun, no matter what season we're in, because yes, we do have seasons in this game, uh, is, I believe, always, I've never experienced it differently, so sorry if there's false information, always a value from 180 to 0, uh, or maybe minus 180 to 0, depending if you place it on the ceiling. I'm not sure if that goes minus then, or if it's just an inver inversion of 180 to 0 versus 0 to 180. I don't know. But when you place it on the ground, then 180 means the sun is currently on the other side of the moon. And 0 means it is currently noon. And 90 means it's currently on the horizon. So all we need to do is to find out is it currently day, is we have to check is the vertical angle uh, 90 or less or just less than 90. Since we're talking decimal numbers, who cares really about that one nanosecond when it's exactly 90? Who cares? So let's place that daylight sensor and read that, read that value. Uh, I will not put an LED up for that because it's not such a relevant piece of information. Um, but I will just write the value that I read to the housing to our nice debug uh, thing. It still has state 3. Haha, <laughs> hilarious. So we can uh, verify that this is working. Now we can see solar angle 112 degrees, 113, the number is increasing, which tells me that yes, the sun is going towards midnight, We as this night is still beginning. There's no solar irradiance, uh, that's the watts that you can also read, I believe, the exact number uh, in the uh, difficulty selection screen for that um, planet or moon. Horizontal angle and vertical angle. Uh, you know, um, that the vertical angle and solar angle are currently the same is because the mood is the default mood. Zero, I think. Doesn't matter, we will now read the vertical angle. I will not put that on the housing because why would I? I can see it right here. Uh, but I will react to it and I want to turn on and off that light accordingly. So let's first clean up the source code a bit. Here we have the arc furnace. Um, and what I can also do, I mean, if I don't do anything with the arc furnace, but only this, then I believe I can also do that instead of defining that up there because that res results in the number. I can also just paste the number here instead of defining the number up here. And while we're talking about de what define does, which just defines a constant of a name that I give, I can also say Elias, which is also a definition, but it's different. Now I'm giving an arbitrary name to a register. So in the future, when I use this register, um, I can instead of R0 just write that name, which sometimes is indeed a meaningful thing to do. And since we have 15 registers, I suggest that you use register R15 and R14, R13 and so forth for your named registers and um, uh, only name these ones last, if ever. I mean, it's 15, uh, 16 registers, so do you really need that? Um, leave, leave them free so that you can use them for temporary values that you only need from moment to moment. You shouldn't recycle registers, um, like use them for multiple purposes that have names. That is uh, bad programming. It would still work, of course, but you will be confused. And keeping yourself non-confused is one of the big tricks in programming. So you can, for example, write comments in here. Just use this uh, symbol. Uh, that's a number, numeric symbol, number symbol. Oh, that doesn't work in, for labels? That's interesting, I didn't know that. But it works for our statements, here. Alrighty, we have our main loop, then we are activating the arc furnace, and that we're doing so that is already written, the source code, so it would just be stupid to put some comment on that. Comments can also be a problem in source code, since the comment has to reflect what it is actually commenting. But what if I change the source code? Then I have to also change the comment, and if I don't do that, then the comment is now not just useless, but actually dangerous. Uh, the temperature... Um, will the temperature be more important? Should I have a named register for this one? I don't know, let's leave it like this for now. This is the indoor temperature. And I can now use the named approach, or I can stick with the, with, with the screws. I, I don't know which one I should use, it's not really important. Let's stick with this one for now. 
Oh, I think I can also use Elias for the for these. I can say Elias D1 um, indoor gas sense indoor, and then I can wait. What's happening? Oh, right. I have to first give the name, and then what is it that I want to define as such? See, um, my uh, my third screw, D D2, might now become the outdoor gas sensor, uh, or maybe this uh, other thing, um, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, daylight sensor, and uh, this would then be irritating that I have to remember these numbers and that the numbers are not consecutive. Like uh, I would have like the uh, the LED indoor should be D0, the LED for the outdoor temperature should be D1, but now I don't have to care. I just call it that name and I don't care. Does this actually work? It does work. It just jumped from 18 to 90. Oh, interesting. When you point there, now you get the actual precise value. Thank you, Rocketworks. That does help. I'm pretty sure that's new. Uh, okay, gas sensor indoor, subtract and show the value. What is it I want to do? Yeah, the daylight sensor. Is it already referred to? So as you now know, I can, instead of the screws, also just uh, write some words there. But let's stick with the screws for now. LED, gas sensor, daylight sensor. So let's load that value, load into register R0 from day sense the vertical angle. Let's see if that has actually worked. Write it into the housing. And uh, DB always uh, refers to the device base, to the foundation, to where that chip has been stuck. And there are other devices, I believe even uh, this one, the water purifier, has uh, a chip slot, I guess. Uh, it looks like these other devices look very similar and they all have a chip slot and that then would also be the, the DB that you can refer to. You see that our electricity is burning out. Um, soon there will not be no more electricity and you can hear now how annoying that is that this thing is being turned on all the time by the chip. So those are things we can uh, improve. I want to burn some coal but not much. So let's just uh, do half half, 10 remaining, burn all of that. And um, this works, what did I want to do? I don't remember. We have the angle, is the angle being shown here? No, it's not being shown, export. Aha, I forgot to export. Yeah, what does the export done do? It, it, it writes the source code that we have here onto the chip. And the import button does the opposite. And so you have to be careful not to confuse the two. Particularly, w w since we can have multiple chips here in the same uh, cable network. And I can uh, use the labeler to give the IC housing a different name so that it's more meaningful. Which, once we have multiple, will be more meaningful. And um, uh, also the game's kind of fucking with you because uh, sometimes it changes the selection here by itself. I think it only does that when you uh, are loading the save game or such things. But uh, yeah, you have to keep that in mind when you're importing and exporting. Else frustration! Source code, one of the most valuable goods there are. So people who don't back up their source codes multiple times, they're they are doing it wrong. Let's say it carefully. So now we have the daylight angle and I want to apply that to whether the lights are on. So let's first make sure that we are even turning the lights on and off with our source code. Uh, wall light along wide. I think that's actually what it is. So let's define that up here because it's a rid ridiculous term. Define um, lights or let's say lights uh, start or wall, just lights, whatever. Uh, bu -bu CLS lights hash structure 
wall light long wide upper lowercase is important I'm not sure if this was right but we will find out quickly right batch to these on zero will this turn off the light it doesn't is there multiple connections here no only this one has multiple connections those don't have that structure wall light long wide let's see what they're actually called structure light long wide aha uh -huh. okay that was a mistake hello so we're now in control of the lights um, how much so well I, this one is locked currently up uh, by the way let's unlock that the only way to do that is with source code let's tell all the lights that are that they are now uh, not locked run that okay um, and now I want to use that value that I have here and I need to um, turn this value into a logical statement so wait that music's a bit loud uh, okay so I uh, want to turn I want to achieve a value of 0 or 1 0 as an off or 1 as an on and I want to convert this value that I have here I don't have to write that to the housing I know that this is working um, I want to convert that into uh, this uh, uh, into such a logical value and that's rather easily done So I'm saying write if less than or equal into register, let's say R0, whatever, then I don't longer have the vertical value, but uh, if I need that, then we'll later switch over to R1, whatever. Write if less than or equal, and now what, what is less than or equal what? Exactly. Now I'm comparing the so far value of register R0 with the value 90. So if register, what happens now is that if register R0 is equal to 90 or is less than 90, then R0 will afterwards have the value 1. If the condition though is not fulfilled, then we'll have the value 0. This means that the light will now be on, if I say this, um, if it is actually already daylight. That's stupid. So let's say uh, it is greater than or equal. So when it's night, then the light shall be on. It uh, shall not be on. And 90 is cutting it a bit close. I mean, when the sun's on the horizon, it's not quite bright in here already. So I might have to use a different number. But let's use this for now. Aha. So what's the sun angle? Oh. <laughs> See? Good demonstration. Uh, let's uh, leave it on then until 70 degrees and see if that is too much. Now we have automated lighting when it comes to day and night. The angle still has to be adjusted, but we're getting there. Downside in comparison to our nice logic approach here is that the value is now being written all the time. So if I want to adjust the amount of electricity used because I think, yeah, I don't need that much light, I can't do that right now. There's probably a way to circumvent that programming wise somehow. For example, I can say only force these lights on when the uh, when the angle, when the daily angle is between 70 and 68, then it will be triggered on and afterwards I'm in control, you know, stuff like that. I probably just said it wrong, but the concept was conveyed. Maybe it's already bright enough from the sun. Maybe 7 is overdoing it. 70. No, that seems reasonable. Let's stick with 60. Okay, now we have automated our day-night thing. See, um, like at the beginning, everything was super tedious and um, now uh, things are rather convenient and now we're getting our stuff here sped into the station easily and it's even smelting that automatically now and see we're accelerating in convenience is what you could say so things are really getting interesting interesting we have some momentum now okay I want to see the uh, temperature 
of the outdoors. Hmm, where shall that sensor be? By the way, what's with the chickens? Are they all dead or...? Maybe they died. I'm not sure. I can check that later by checking the save game. Actually, I haven't saved in a while, haven't I? So let me just quick uh, use... Wait, um... Um, XML world... Chicken... Okay, I have just loaded, uh, looked in my save game and there is chicken save data in the save game. Now let's save. And now the editor, Notepad++, is telling me, hey dude, the file has changed, do you want to reload? Yes. Now we'll search again for the word chicken. And I can't find it. Okay, conclusion, all chicken have died. Cool. That's fun. Mm. Where would I put that gas sensor? Should I just put it here, you know? But it's in, in the vicinity of this thing. Um, no, I'd rather put it over here. Doesn't really matter, does it? Will I eventually have something that will exhaust some gases out here? Because that would irritate the gas sensor, I don't want that. Maybe it's indeed best to put it on the roof. Yeah, put it ironically almost directly above the daylight sensor. So many sensors. Now the station has become, if it were a spaceship, it would be a sensor ship. Mm -hmm. Now that I have two gas sensors, it might be tricky to select the right one. Maybe I should give them names, huh? And should I have another station battery, maybe, to harvest more storm energy, since I now have more wind turbines? I think so. Let's make another station battery. Alright, oh, it uh, has a different name here. Stupidly. Ah, uh, that doesn't work. And I could now put this uh, upside down. Uh, okay, right, of course, there's something on the back. It doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, I could put this upside down, but um, this means the number will also be upside down. And that's quite stupid, because these consoles here, those, you can place any which way you want. And this will always be readable, oriented right. But um, the LEDs, when you put uh, put it like this, then uh, no, that won't work. And that's quite stupid, man. Um, I think I should put this thing in a different place. Ah, out we go again. Why can I not place this? Oh, because that's too high up at the edge. At the edge. Hmm. 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 This annoys me a bit. What can we do about this? Well, you have seen we had some struggle in the last video to turn this thing on because that switch is blocked, you know. But uh, we can turn this on with logic. And if I set the on value of the batteries, uh, this will indeed also switch the physical switch. That is how this is implemented and uh, maybe that's not realistic, but I think it's very nice. It's uh, pleasant that it is this way. So if you ever have some batteries stuck together like that, just say SB hash uh, open um, parenthesis um, quotation mark structure station battery I think 
uh, structure battery. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. And the large ones are structure battery large. Uh, on one, and they will all turn on, and that's it. End of story. SB. Huh? Or you can use um, logic chips, of course, to do that. And later you can remove them, because once the battery is on, huh? job's done. So I need some iron sheets, I believe. I have three. Pretty sure that's insufficient, so let's make some. Yeah, and this will be dealt with, I can promise you that, but not now. So many things to do. So little reality to do it. Yeah, where would I put that station battery? I will put it in a place where it's rather fugly. I will, um... Oh, will I? Hmm. I mean, usually I would just stack these up. And then there is, as you can see here, a gap between them. And then that's unrealistic. Because in reality, things need a foundation. And you know what? Let's try to keep things realistic. Would this work? Can I put this here? Yes, I can. Can I put a cable there? See, that's the thing with these doors. I will show you shortly. Uh, let's try to place a cable down. I cannot place it through this door. If it were, like I explained in the previous video, a uh, manual hatch, then I could. And uh, here I can also not place a cable, but the composite doors, they allow me to have a cable there. But anyway, um, for all purposes, this is sufficient. Oh my god, I guess I will have to put my money where my mouth is. As in, show you how that is actually being turned on with source code. Weldy, weldy. Not yet useful. Yeah, I mean, I haven't cabled up the output side yet, so not useful anyway. But if it would store energy, I think that would already be a use, I think. Okay, we can see this one is not wired up logically. The logic is not wired up. So if I would try to use that switch trick, that wouldn't fly. But now it would. So let's turn the thing on. Is this on the same logic network? Yes, it is. So, what's my mistake? Or is the battery being sucked dry by all the energy that I'm using? Maybe so. We can find out by just pushing some more electricity in there. Huh. Well, I think this thing would be blinking by now. So, no. I did something wrong. It is not yet turned on. Exported. Uh, everybody saw that but me, huh? Batterix. Asterix. Obelix. Export. Yes, okay, now it's turned on. That simple. Okay, a gas sensor. Maybe I should name it, but uh, maybe I can just give it a different... Um, hmm. Selecting outdoor gas sensor. This is the day sensor. Let's select the gas sensor. Alright. 
Here we have a gas sensor, and then there's another gas sensor, I, and, and I do not know which one is which. And that's stupid. I could have named them, then I wouldn't have this problem. But I would just be stupid and try it like this. Aha, okay, I accidentally got the right sensor. Or did I? Let's see, um, maybe I'm actually looking at the solar angle for some reason. No, temperature, minus soon 44, 44, 45. Alright, that's the outdoor temperature, we have that. Then we can now display that. Once we have the console up, where is it? There. But I cannot place it here. Or can I? Wait, I can't place it here. I have to be tricky with the cables, though. Come on. I cannot place the cable vertically. That doesn't fly. But I can place it like this. That it bends to the backwards. I can't? Ah, fuck. Now this is stupid. That is plain simply stupid, man. But this should work. Oh. No, it shouldn't. Vertically down doesn't work, to the side is useless. But I can place this thing higher. And then I have to reselect it, of course. Uh, let's do that then. Ah, whoops. You can already hear the error. That's my mouse that glitched out once again. Now we can uh, nicely see which LED that will be. Okay, there we have the indoor temperature. And I want to also see the outdoor temperature. Which one do I want to see on the right or on the left? Hmm. We, by the way, we can also set the color of this text. So I could express which is which using color. But a color could also be used for me to express, hey, this is way too hot, man, you have to do something about it. So if I'm walking around here and glance at only without reading with my eyes, then I can realize, oh, dude, you have to do something about that. But uh, I would choose to to define what value I'm seeing there using color. And let's just stick with this. Uh, which one is that? Day sensor, gas sensor, and next one. See, with, with this named or and named and type approach that I demonstrated, uh, you are not dependent on the screws. So yeah, um, then you don't. Then it's not just like six devices and then you're screwed or whatever. And also, I can just uh, remove the housing and put it somewhere else and put the chip in without having to reassign all the screws because then the screws will be reset then. Interesting. Oh, even more interesting. Why is this? Oh, I'm not writing anything to that thing yet. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, we haven't yet defined that. D4 would be... That. Nope. This one.
Um, what is defined here? LED display small. Hmm. Why doesn't it work? You can still hear the arc furnace in the background. Click, 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 click. Let temp out. Let temp out D4. Setting R0. Uh huh, that works. So, what is R0? It is the temperature. So, that should be working. We already know that. Yep, now we have the outdoor and the indoor temperature. What color shall I choose for outdoor? Outdoor is usually cold, indoor is usually warm and cozy and roomy. Uh, we have the plants in here, we have to think of the plants greenhouse wise. So let's say we have um, blue and green. Or brown and green because it looks like the planet. Uh, let's, look brown. let's use brown. So we want to write the color of this thing color, color dot uh, green. And here we write color not brown. Uh, it's not quite readable, is it? Um, uh, let's say orange then. Alright. Indoor, outdoor temperature. Okay, the cooling. Um, I'm actually, didn't I... Didn't I make some more uh, radiators? Oh, right, I guess I wanted to make them, but there was one of resources. Gold, yeah, yeah, I needed to smelt some, yeah. Which I have no done. More gold, please. Um, okay, so I would now turn this thing on which pumps, pumps this, the pipe dry and this thing I would only pu uh, turn on when the indoor temperature is too high But this thing would then stay on the whole time else I cannot make sure that the, that the pipe is empty But I can also slap a pipe analyzer on this thing and read it out and once the pressure is zero Then I can turn that thing off. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's not to demonstrate that I will just do this More gold, more electrum. Mm. 95 grams of electrum. I think we could split that up. Hmm. Not the best placement. That works. Yeah, the pipe analyzer tells us there's nothing in there, temperature, capacity, and so forth. And that will also tell us the things that are in there, I believe. Yep. Temperature in Kelvin, as per usual. Now it can be turned off because the pipe is empty and I want to tell the computer to do that. But first let's make our nice cooling assembly a bit more powerful. And this guy, I swear, let's deal with that motherfucker. Okay, you have now seen this logic writer thing where I said uh, 
write into the register a logic value 0 or 1 depending on an evaluation depending on uh, uh, what I'm doing there equal uh, equals greater than smaller than or whatever and instead of um, writing something into a register what you can also oh <laughs> wonderful what you can also do is uh, you can can branch this egg is not fertilized and why shouldn't I eat it you know, to dominate them even harder. Yeah, but it's turned off. I guess one of the next steps we should do once I've done uh, once I've done with all this is decorate a bit because it's looking horrible in here, man. And once we have decorated, the same base will suddenly look much more appreciative. Uh, what can I do? Can I put this in a microwave? Oh, I can. Oh, it's creating nothing. That was an invalid recipe. And so it's now gone. And see, that's what I mean by magical device. This thing is just so that you have that kind of feature in there, and then they're done. No? Because ultimately, in the background, there would then just be some sub subroutines, some if clause, if that's in there, and then and so forth. Since it has is 3D representation in the world, and, and then that's good enough, right? But that's how other games would do it. This game, though, is a simulation. So it doesn't fake to be the thing, it tries to really be the thing. So how can we do this then? I want this thing to not do that, except when meaningful. So since we already have this arc furnish, arc furnish, <laughs> the arc furnish, um, I think I should define this up here because now we'll refer to it multiple times. And as nice as the track basically is, it's also irritating. Define CLS arc. Burn. Burn. Hard fern. Um, structure arc furnace. Activate one. But not necessarily. We want to do that conditionally. The battery, though, shall be turned on unconditionally. So, since it's such a little singular statement, let's put it up here. But now things get a bit more complex. Now I want to load batch from all existing arc furnaces because I'm too lazy to now do this named approach and name that thing and so forth I will just read from all of them because that is currently just uh, it is applicable to my station situation um, so I will load first it always wants to know where when I say right when I say right it wants to know where and I write to the arc furnace when I say load it wants to know where and it will say register so I will write into the register from all arc furnaces. Um, I think it was recipe hash. Um, and then whatever. Average summary, don't really care. Let's say maximum. Oh, maximum is not good because negative values. Um, then. Mm, um, yeah, and, and sum is also not good. What if I have two arc furnaces? One of them has exactly the opposite of what the other has number wise because they're not always negative. I know this is ridiculous. But if I now say average, that's the same problem. Hmm. Ah, okay, whatever. Then let's say sum. I like to use sum because that would result if the source number is an integer, like no decimal places, still in an integer into an you know because it feels cleaner. That's why I do this. So now I'm loading this into this register, and I want to see that on my housing. Problem is, I don't know if the housing is already occupied with a value that I'm already writing there. So load sub. What am I actually doing here? That is the um, show in show temperature indoor. Show temperature outdoor. Indoor temperature outdoors. Nay, I don't want to show it outdoors or indoors. I want to show the indoor outdoor temperature by the right temperature first because it's like uh, a directory. Uh, what am I doing? I'm showing something. 
of what am I showing? I'm showing a subdirectory, I'm showing a temperature. Another subdirectory, which one is it? It's the indoor or outdoor temperature. This kind of approach makes sense, even though it is language-wise a bit wicked, but um, it makes uh, navigating, navigating information easier. Like when someone tells you where they live. Well, I'm living on, I don't know, Downing Street. Okay, Downing Street. Oh, there's that music again. It means Rusty's gonna be asking for money. Yes, but sorry, this time I'm gonna fucking uh, cut you short. I wanna do stuff here. Um, so, uh, living on Downing Street. Yeah, okay, uh, which city? Uh, London. Okay, which, uh, which country? Uh, at this point, people would know what, where that is because I use these stupid examples. But the, in principle, if you just start with uh, continent and country and city, then you're giving more and more context so that the frame of mind is instantly right. Because there's, for example, uh, city names that are um, maybe the city name that applies to uh, maybe Saudi Arabia and one that applies to the United States. You have completely different frames of mind. Then you zoom out, yeah, this is the city, then maybe you already have enough clues and so forth. But I think um, zooming the mind in is a good thing. And so when I talk to a colleague at work, I will first throw a toss a few tags at their head. I will actually speak some words that will actually be tags. I will say um, customer, uh, as an example, I mean, I'm not a robot. I will just s uh, toss some words at them so that their mind can already kind of zoom into what we are going to be talking about. And when their mind has then zoomed in there, has teleported into that other universe, then I will be talking about all the details. You know, give them some time, give them some reference. Anyway, so <sighs> show temperature outdoor. Waste time caution. And this is um, automatic. Uh, lighting. And now I want two, three, four, um, recipe hash. And it is not shown on the on the device. Yes, the housing, SDB, SDB, no one is saying SDB, okay. SDB R0. Uh, wait, what? S uh, DB setting R0. I want to see what's in there now. We get uh, also, uh, right, export. You get zero because there's nothing in there. Now let's toss something in there. Uh, let's say, um, oh, I prepared this. No. Some iron would be nice because it's far quickly smelted. Now we see the iron uh, type, and now it's gone. So, if I now make this clack 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 dependent on whether there is a recipe hash, then we're already done. And I think I can actually be so dirty as to just write this directly here, because of either it's zero or it's not zero, you know? Instead of first turning it into, you know, S uh, N. Uh, not equal zero, uh, a zero, a zero. See now, if a zero is not equal to zero, then a zero will have now become one. So I'm turning on the arc furnace. Um, this would work, but I think it's not even necessary. I think it's a bit dirty doing it like this, but. And now there's silence. Let's toss something in. No! Ah! Uh. Uh, I didn't want to smell all of that. So, what's happening? Why, why am I not seeing anything? I'm confused. Have I not read out the recipe hash? But maybe recipe hash refers to the thing that's already in the arc furnace. And since I was turning it on all the time, it was also opening itself up, taking something in. Maybe that's the problem here. Um, so I cannot use the recipe hash. Maybe reagents? Would that work? Though, 
I don't know how reagents actually work because uh, there are some statements in this uh, programming language particularly about reagents. So, okay, um, then I will just load batch slot. Slot index zero. How do I know this? Well, probably because it has only one slot, so that would be the right slot, right? But we can also see here the logic slots which numbers they have. We have the occupy value and all of these for slot 0 and 1. And which slots do we have? We have the slot, import and export. So I care about the import slot and about whether it is occupied, just like I did with that logic chip. So load patch slot R0, CLS arc 0, um, slot type, wait, uh, slot index would be 0, or I can say import, I guess. No, I can't, okay. Mm, logic slot type, yeah, um, occupied, and then I don't care, sum. And this is a logic value per, uh, already, so I wouldn't have to do this anyway. And now it's burned. All right, uh, hypothetically, this is now reliable. Let's see if it is. Ah, so I can interrupt this, it will toss something out, and then we'll start up again directly, instead of me having to do that. La la la, la la la, la 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 We're getting energy, baby. How much are we getting? Well, uh, we have like uh, eight or so, so we should be getting like 4,000 watts. Which is joule per second, as you rem remember. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, uh. 4.8 kilowatts, so we have... Um, more than that. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 8. Yeah, 48, true. That makes sense. 48 kilowatts, uh, f f no, 4.8 kilowatts are going in here. Good thing we have a second station battery. Now, let's test the arc furnace once more. <coughs> Seems to be working reliably. <clears throat> so the clack clack is gone now the temperature control I have this thing up and do I also want to wire this up here well we are already at five uh, five connections so that's a bit annoying isn't it and the, I also want to control the wall heater yeah we're kind of running out of screws so we're screwed so let's do something radical and start over well, not entirely though. Where's the chip, man? <coughs> Dude, I just place down the um, the housing. <coughs> What's going on in my throat? <coughs> um. <coughs> 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 when I was split, uh, short break. So I don't know what that was, but uh, we're back in the game. And um, the chip, I believe, what I wanted to say before something fucking happened to my throat, um, <clears throat> when I placed down the housing, is this recording now? Meep, meep, meep. Yes. When I placed down the housing and the chip was lying there, I assumed that the housing kind of pushed that underground. And what I just did in, in this, um, oh, the storm is over. They haven't fixed that yet, Rocketworks. You know, when you save during a storm and then load, the storm will be stopped. I don't like that. Good thing we can actually control the weather. Now this is cheating, but then again, isn't it? I, uh, is it? I mean, um, the storm was going on and now it's stopped. That would be cheating. Weather. Storm, start, stop. Start and stop weather events. Start, storm. Nee, storm, start. Storm, start. <clears throat> Alright, I hope this stops by itself. Otherwise, I have to turn that on and off at some point. Um, so what I just did is um, I le left, I saved, I left to the main menu, and then what's happening? All right, no, no chip. <clears throat> um, and then I uh, looked in my world XML file, and I located myself. I looked for for the large battery, and then I looked also for the other large battery and tried to determine which is which because I also looked for the filters and I saw yeah yeah that's probably me. And then I copied those three lines with the X Y Z coordinates and. <clears throat> And then I've, I've also found the chip, and I just gave that chip the same coordinates, except I increased the, 
the Y value slightly. Not that it's relevant. I think it would have worked. I have done that also when I was on Venus. I was tossing the disk and other things towards my airlock, but the disk for some reason was gone. I don't know where it was, and I just fixed its location like this, and then, then I can use it again. <clears throat> I mean, I could have printed a new chip. The code is still in the computer. I could just have exported this. But, you know, whatever. Um. So, uh, now you can see the screws are all completely reset. What I want to do is I want to do it the way I deem proper, which is I want to do it uh, y using named devices instead of assigning it to screws. So that um, I can assign as many devices as I want. This will fuglify our source code a bit, and this will also take some time to do, uh, but I want to do it. That is why it's happening now. Um, <clears throat> so, Gus sends or sends uh, indoor. Where's the other sensor? Is it behind this wall? No. Ah, right, I put it up there. Sense outdoor. Hmm, I have a low frame rate right now. Is this because of all the programs I have open, or because of the storm, or because of some chicken stuffs, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe it will normalize after the storm. Um, okay, so these things need to be named <coughs> LED out uh, indoor LED outdoor Then I want to drink something Actually, it's food this time Oh, we have another potato This one uh, is still seven nutrition, five hours left, so I guess that will stay until the end. I guess I will keep that thing around so that it rots, so that I can create some charcoal, so that I can filter my water and stuff. I want to try that out. Um, okay. Alrighty, let's do this proper then. <clears throat> so, the lights, we access them all together. So, not a problem. Uh, to keep it like this, then we have the structure arc furnace. Also all of them uh, at the same time. But I want to access now the gas sensor, so I will define, now it's a good example for actually this class and instance uh, stuff that I was talking about. Define CLS gas sense hash Structure gas sensor. No nah, sensor. Perfection every moment saves one a lot of grief afterwards, so rather focus on the moment. Structure gas sensor. Define ins gas sense hash uh, sense indoor. And now copy this. Uh, ins gas. Oh, right. Which one? In. <laughs> Stupid that using the same word here doesn't uh, doesn't show you an error. I understand why. Why shouldn't you be able to rename her uh, to redefine that word? But uh, when do people really do that? And so rather when that happens, it's probably an error. <coughs> that works. That works. Now this we want to load. Batch named into register R zero from. Um, CLS sense. Hey, what? What's happening? Did I call it gas sense? Okay. Uh, gas sense. Uh, ins. Gas sense in the temperature, and since it's batch, we want to use the sum. <coughs> now do the same here. Or out. That should be working now. Then we have the. Uh, l what's that's the light. But I'm reading from the day sensor, right. 
save something that I forgot. So that's then since a day. <clears throat> Define CLS a uh, day sense hash structure. Daylight is one word. Sensor. Define. I ha could have m multiple of these, so I. I don't know. I'm, I would just use a named approach. Why not? Ah, oh, come on. Ins day sense hash. Uh, since day. So load, batch named. Maybe that was even all already. Uh, oh right, the LED things. I have to write to those. Um, okay, the gas sensor outdoors has been done. Nice, we have a laundry list here. Gas sensor indoor has been done, day sensor has been done, but the LEDs haven't yet been done. Um, I believe that the structure LED 3, from experience, see that doesn't make sense, so I'd rather look it up. <clears throat> LED small. Structure console LED 5. Alright, that would have, wouldn't have worked. <clears throat> Define CLS LED hash define uh, ins LED in hash what was that again LED indoor I think might be right about all of these I mean I just place them run it see what happens SBN CLS let ins let out. Uh huh. That wouldn't work. And also the color. And, um. Oh, right. So these have also been done, and theoretically everything is now working. No, it's not. What is this thing saying? Uh, incorrect argument count at line 35. Load batch named. Into register R0. Alright, I haven't yet said what the batch mode shall be. Little oversight. Uh -huh. The sun is up, the light is out. We have the indoor temperature, which is a bit high. We have the outdoor temperature, which is getting a bit higher. Um, <clears throat> we have it. See, we are not using the screws at all. So if I dismantle this thing and put it up again and place the chip, it will work instantly because they're no longer dependent on on the housing's uh, configuration. And if I remove this sensor now, this will of course then not measure anything. Let's demonstrate. Actually, let's demonstrate what's happen. What happens? The no the name is let. Sen uh, is sense indoor. Now we're getting this. What's happening here is it's reading a value that's either either NAN, which is short for not a number, or it's reading the value uh, zero. I'm not sure which one it is, but anyway, then I go and just subtract from whatever that is now the 273 to adjust it to Celsius, and that's why we have this wicked number here. Now let's put this thing up again, the gas sensor. Uh, yeah, well, let's open the helmet. Open the waste tank, and actually, interesting, I've never thought about this. Uh, now that I place this here, will it still uh, use electricity? I mean, the light is on off now, I think. The light would be off now, but uh, what about keeping its internal temperature? That's an interesting question. So the gas sensor is up again, but this doesn't work yet because it doesn't have the right name. So let's give it the name. Sense in. And that didn't work. Indoor? I think indoor. Yeah, and that's it. See, not longer dependent on the screws, not as uh, um, fragile as, the, as this stuff here when you would deconstruct something. We're now independent. You have now learned to be independent of that. That is cool, isn't it? 
Okay, we have the automatic lights. We don't have yet have the automatic cooling. Um, so I need that label again. And I'm gonna give this thing the name um, cooling anal, as in huh, a pipe analyzer. Or, you know, it's easy mode. Let's just leave reality running. Define class anal hash structure once more pipe analyzer is what you would think pipe analyzer but they did a mistake rocket works so it has to be actually this you can look that up in the stationpedia it's the very same word um, and I wish they would fix this this can be done in a way that is backwards compatible if they uh, if they want to do this certainly um, anyway so we have this now and now I need to access the device itself because I want to do so. Define ins anal hash. And now I can initialize the device, which I do up here. First I do my initializations of devices and down here I do the code which uses them possibly in various locations. So I do the initialization up here. Write batch name ins anal uh, lock one like I explained earlier so I can no longer turn it on or off. And then afterwards, when I cannot turn it on and off, I turn it on. Let's assume we wouldn't have the main loop here. So it would just be doing this one time. Then if I would first say on and then say lock, then I would still have the chance, a non-zero chance, of hitting this thing and turning it off just between these two statements. It's not impossible, you know? And then it would lock that in the off situation. So it's right to first lock that and then turn it on. But anyway, I'm in, the, I'm in a loop here, so... Who cares? Ah, now it's on. And I can not turn it off because it's locked. Now we can read that value. And uh, let's program the cooling then. For that, I also need the active vents. And I give them names. Uh, cooling uh, vents um, in. And this one sucks out. Cooling vent out. In, in, out, out, okay. Um, I also want to initialize these devices. Um, I will not lock them because maybe in some situations I might be in some kind of emergency and then I want to be able to interfere with those. But uh, if I would interfere with this thing, which de decides whether I blow up my base or not, I think um, that kind of interference would have the opposite effect. So we lock that rather. So initialize the vents then. SBN, ins, vent, in. I want to define its mode. I want it to suck into the station. And like I already said, the undangerous default mode is zero, which pumps into the room instead of sucking the room dry so that you will um, suffer, well, you will suffocate. Now that has been done. Now I only have to turn them on and off respectively. So. So what is it I want to know? I want to know the pressure in that pipe. Um, cooling. And that's why I keep it unpaused. Mm -hmm. So load batch named into register R0 once more from the pipe analyzer. The temper no, the pressure. Pressure uh, sum and then write it to the housing because I want to see if I'm doing it right. Is the housing currently so showing something? Not quite. So export. Oh, hilarious. Uh, Naha, now it's showing something. Why is it the pressure decreasing? 
because the temperature is decreasing and so the gas is contracting. That's, that's what's happening. Now I want to make sure that the that this vent that is supposed to empty that um, does so when there is some pressure in there. And so if you have uh, taken note, then you will know how very easy that is. I will now just say uh, write into register R0 a logic result. If register R0, which is the current is the pressure in the pipe, if that is greater than zero, then I want to have a one. And this will be in here. Now I write to the act to the vent on R0 and now this thing should actually turn on. And it does, and then it turns off, because now we no longer have pressure. So, the pipe is now automatically being evacuated. Now, what I also want is I want to turn this vent on when the temperature is too high, which it currently is. So, let's do that then. See how fucking easy that is once you know your way around. I know that this is not easy for a beginner, and you probably still are one, no matter how much I have shown you, no matter how much I'm talking here, uh, even if, uh, if you're even patient enough to listen to all this crap. But if you, you can realize that if you have uh, had understood everything that I've explained and, and had internalized it, then yeah, then this would be easy because we're just sitting in a car, we're accelerating, metaphorically, accelerating and accelerating with all the abilities that we have and the devices that we have. And now maybe you have understood why I love this game so much because of its unfathomable complexity. And realism also. I'm living in this reality that I cannot control with a computer. This is a, a smart home now. Is it? Well, let's see if we can cool the smart home. So I want to know the temperature. I already have the indoor temperature, but it's lost now. I'm interested in keeping the indoor temperature, so I will reserve a register for that. El Elias, uh, temp in. Temp could mean temporary, but uh, that kind of is contradictory to what I'm doing here, since I'm giving this thing a name. So I will probably mean temperature. Also, temp in, what's that supposed to mean? So R15. Now I go here where I'm dealing with the indoor temperature and replace every occurrence of this value with that name. Actually not necessarily every occurrence. Yes, in this case, that, that is applicable. But what if I had abused this register? What if I had recycled it? For example, turning the temperature suddenly into a logic statement. I did not, so I'm fine. Uh, see, that's why register recycling is something you have to be careful of. And you should definitely not recycle a register like this one. Um, this is now my, uh, my indoor temperature in Celsius. And I have gotten into the habit of always using Celsius so I don't have to tell myself what the unit is. Because I'd, after all I'm programming for myself and writing comments for myself, not for other people who might read this. Also, you know, the line length is limited and the amount of lines is also limited. So um, if something's written down here and then you press enter up here, that line will be gone forever. And if you then press confirm, then it will indeed be gone forever and you will have to reload your, your save game. So it's something to be careful, uh, to be wary of. And now look what's happening. Define, define, define. Start, yield, and then we're doing stuff. And then at the very bottom, jump start. So guess what? Uh, it's easy to run into the problem that suddenly something s stops working or maybe your station blows up or whatever because just because this one line is gone. So this is real astronaut shit, you know, to have uh, to program the reality in which I am surviving. So now we want to react to the temperature. What is it that we want to do? Well, I, w I could now say uh, get the temperature and if it's above something or below something turn that into a logic statement and write that then directly into the on state of the vent. But this would mean that if the gas sensor measures that the temperature is now below that or above that and it, that is changing a few times due to the gas streaming to the state through the station uh, that the vent might be turning on and off uh, oftentimes. But I want to keep it smooth. So I want to turn it on when, it's, um, when the temperature is too high and I want to turn it off when the temperature is low enough. So let's do that then. Um, how can I turn it on? How can I turn it off? Uh, what we are doing here is uh, we are branching. So I'm not doing something unconditionally, I'm doing something only when the opportunity arises. So let's first have this marker cooling down. Because I will have a marker that says cool cooling now and also one that says cooling not. <laughs> which, is, which is not a jump marker because I'm not going to jump there, it's not necessary. 
And um, here I would say ju jump cooling done, else this stuff here will also be executed. And that's why I have this structure here. So what, I, what do I want to do? I want to react to the station temperature. Um, let's say the temperature is too high, then I want cooling now. Branch. See, we have done this greater than, but we can also do B, as in branch greater than. Branch greater than. Um, what are we comparing? Oh, um, let's see here. We branch to line C if A greater than B. You can see A, B, C. So we're branching to that line, uh, to this one. I will say that soon. If A is greater than B. So very simple, I'm comparing A and B. I'm comparing the temp in to the number 25, which I deem too, too high. Two, 25 is still nice, but if it's greater than 25, I want cooling now. Else, I want... Oh, actually I just made a mistake. Um, a logic mistake jump cooling down. If the temperature is less than 20, 22 cooling off cooling off and now all I have to do is tell that thing to turn on or off. So we say ins event out on zero we no longer want to do this or we say turn it on and that's it now we have automated our station coding let's go through the source code again if that is indeed true load from the pipe analyzer the pressure turn the pressure into a statement uh, if the pressure is greater than zero then the statement will be one so if there's still pressure in there we will turn the the vent that pumps the pipe dry on now we're dealing with something completely different. Now we're looking at the station indoor temperature in Celsius. We're saying that uh, if the temperature is greater than 25, then we want to branch to cooling now. Cooling now says right batch name vent out on one. And afterwards it falls through to this label so we don't have to jump there. Else I would have to put this here too. Um, and if the temperature is less than 22, then we jump to cooling off here, uh, which turns that thing off and then jumps to the end, so this is not executed. And if neither is true, then we'll just also jump down here, which means that at some point this thing will be turned on, but then, then it will be left to its own devices, or it will be turned off. But in between, uh, nothing will, will happen here. Let's see if that works. The left one turned on just because there was pressure in the pipe. Uh, the indoor temperature you can see now is uh, slowly diving down, but I will accelerate that slightly, I guess, by turning off this vent so that the gas will linger in the, in the cooling pipe for longer. It will linger longer, and so the cooling will probably be a bit stronger. It's a bit stupid to do it like this. Um, maybe I could put a delay in there. Um, or maybe I could say, as long as the vent, as this one is on, uh, this one shall not unconditionally react to the pressure. It shall only turn on when the pressure is greater than na na na. But once this thing is off, it shall pump the pipe dry. Is something we could do. But um, let's not do that now. So now we have a cooling system. Uh, we can also already deal with heating while the cooling is taking place, why not? So, um, yeah, I wanted to call that cooling, but, you know, I realized I should have named them climate, and that's a problem because I cannot just rename them, because everything is now name-based. So let's call that in heating, then. Heating... Uh, heating wall heater zero. Maybe I will have multiple of these and I can turn them on in stages, you know. If the temperature is below 20, then I will turn on 1. If it's below 19, I will turn on 2. And we have to be careful of the cables, which can only take a load of 5,000 kilowatts. And every one of these takes 1,000 watts. But, you know, um, heating this. Define... 
Here is heat ash structural wall heater, I think. And maybe I should put this up here where the is the uh, no put the active vent. No, that makes sense. Okay, okay. I want to test if this works. By forcing it off. So if I try to turn it on, I will see that it's actually logic controlled. And see how easy that is already working. Um, well, when I, do I want to turn this thing on? when the temperature is too cold. So I should use the same kind of logic there. And I will, but I will implement it differently so you can see what can be done. And afterwards I will use this improved uh, code here too. This is one of those situations when copying a whole block would make sense, but okay. Um, so let's see, I want to check if the temperature is less than 20. Then I say heating. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I will keep the labels. I wanted to show you this uh, branch relative command. Branch equal branch greater than relative. Oh, no, branch relative greater than. Uh, that's just like the other one. You would just say, is, for example, register a zero or the absolute number something. Is that greater than... Oh, crap. Is that uh, greater than uh, this number? Or is this number greater than that number? Or is this register greater than that register? So, is this register greater than this register? Then I would jump by two lines. So this means I would not be here, I would be here. So even if I say this, I would not be here, I would be here. Relative branching, so I don't need a label. That's what that is. But I realize that's really not the best approach for, for this situation. So, heating uh, now. And if it is warmer than 22, greater than 22, See, uh, that, that, this, that is not when the cooling would kick in. The cooling stops working at 22. So it's reasonable to do it like this. Heating off. And then we say jump heating done. Instead of jump heating done, I could also do jump start. But, you know, you see, uh, if I would have done that here, then I couldn't execute this stuff here. And now I have these nice task blocks that I can use. Heating done. Heating now. Heating off, and then uh, I did I delete that? No, I didn't. Heating off, heating now, and jump heating done. And that should already be it. Let's see. A branch if the indoor temperature in Celsius is less than 20, heating now. Heating now. Write uh -huh, a 1 into that heater. And then we're done. Uh, branch greater than temperature 22, heating off, heating off, uh, right, zero, and then jump, heating done. Good. Afterwards, jump, heating done. All right, we're done. Export. Now we have a complete uh, temperature control of our station, automated. And it's not very fast, I see. Um, actually, the temperature in indoor is increasing. Um, let's turn the chip off so that I have control over these things. Oh, the temperature was, the pressure in there was actually increasing. Interesting. Yeah, because it was cooling for so long. I don't know why that would actually be the case. Why would it not, like, stay in balance or whatever? I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, during the day, we have not enough um, uh, cooling power. So that is wasted electricity. So we can now add another condition. We can say, during the day, don't do that thing. 
Let's do that. Let's do that. It's um. When is it day? Well, when is it day? We don't care about the day. We care about the temperature. When the outdoor temperature is above zero degrees, then we don't want to do that thing. So let's turn this on again and see to that it acts accordingly. Um, we have the temperature outdoor not yet as some fixed value. So let's do that here too different register of course and here now you can I can just change this to 13 or whatever it doesn't matter because I never used this number I'm just using the name it will work every time just like when I define a register content here write a 17 into register of 4 if I never overwrite that register of 4 will have this value all throughout in the same way only this is not a constant value this is a reference to a value holder so uh, Elias temperature out temperature outdoor load it here subtract it to Celsius and make use of it okay so how do we do this then now down here with the uh, with the with the cooling um, here I am deciding that, uh, here I'm deciding that the pipe shall be sucked dry and that I think should also happen during the day because I don't see why not but the turning on of that thing should uh, be different I have an idea. Let's just use as the first condition uh, branch greater than temp out zero cooling off. Done. That was it. That was all of it. See, um, as the first thing we make this decision. If the temperature outdoor is greater than uh, zero degrees, we jump here, cooling will be turned off and then cooling is done. Nothing else will be executed. And therefore, now the cooling is more energy efficient than it was before. Uh, and it's cooling very weakly. I'm actually a bit irritated that it is this many radiators, but it's cooling so weakly. Should I swap them out for, for, the, for the radiation coolers? I don't think so. I mean, we have atmosphere out there. I don't really get it. But anyway... Um, in principle this works and if need be I can adjust it so that the pressure in there will be built first to some level so that it has more uh, time to uh, to make use of this whole cooling assembly so automated cooling automated healing hypothetically and um, let's look at my at my little notes here What have I written down? We did the chickens. We did them good. <laughs> uh, water storage. We did that. Uh, upright wind turbines. Logic chips. Arc furnace. Yeah, we did those. And then we undid those. We have furnished somewhat. We did programming. And then I wanted to add another room. Uh, but that's not something for today, I believe. Um, instead, though... Let's beautify this. Before I leave this, I mean, normally, uh, the next episode, if there will be one, would begin with the station being beautiful. But this time, I want to do that um, live, basically, on camera, so to speak. So let's do that, then. Uh, let's first start with the airlock. This floor here this look, looks ridiculous. I mean, really, uh, so far, you, maybe you have been looking at all of this functionally or through the lens of intention and necessity and not being able to cope because of all the information that was streaming towards you. But if you're really looking at all this, this looks like it is um, in, under construction. And that is intentional. It intentionally looks under construction. Not my intention, but theirs, Rocketworks. Because technically, it is under construction. Um, let's uh, remove this crap here. So let's make it look like it is not under construction. Funny, now I'm working on the light switch chips and just then the light turns on. That is coincidence, of course. Temperature is dropping. I will hope, I hope that I have an eye on that so that we can see the cooling kicking in when it's time. Why am I carrying those stupid logic chips this whole time? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this can also be dangerous. Uh, what I'm doing here is this jumping around. Because uh, if I'm standing on such a thing and then I run into a seating, uh, seating structure, then actually my suit might get damaged. You don't want that. So, it's a bit too tight in here, but you know, it's my initial station. Okay, um, you have seen at the beginning in video 1, hopefully, uh, that uh, these walls that I can put up, uh, this is a kit and I use the mouse wheel to use different types. And um, they have different looks, but all of them are ugly in my opinion. Um, so I want to use the look that I normally use, which is just smooth surface of whatever color I choose. And therefore I will now boot up the auto lathe, put in some steel, because we don't have any yet. Because for this now, I think I will need steel. Uh, wall. What kind of walls do we have? We have lots of walls. We have arched walls with some decorative uh, arches. We have... Um, I don't know what exactly this is. We have the iron walls, we have used plenty. We can see here from the color, the whiter, whitish color, that it is steel. Um, so what we need now, what I want to do now is a flat wall. From behind. No, I want to, do the f I want to use the flat wall. And uh, this will take one steel. But then I will also need uh, a steel sheet. As you can see here, we have also have steel sheets. Those are exactly like the iron sheets. And like I said, this is much more efficient. So the next room that we would build should uh, definitely make use of that. So let's look at this. When I place this, we have the option. Uh, we have lots of options. Wall flat, which is what I will use. We have the large panel. We have a panel with an arrow on it, uh, which I can't see. Now, if I place this down now, I will not see the arrow. But if I complete the construction, then I will see the arrow. Here, there it is. Uh, I think you can see that in the stationpedia also. Um, yeah, kind of. This is part of this kit. No, wait, that was wrong. And here at the bottom you can see what those look like. This thing is actually just a round kind of thing, which I can place um, on the corner between two walls that are not really hitting each other correctly, so that it's nicely round. But I will use wall flat. And uh, there's some unpleasant uh, usability flaw here. Uh, when I place these walls, uh, that will work, of course, but uh, when later I place them, the program, the game might have... Ah, aua, that was loud. Might have reverted its, its selection that I already made to flat wall, might have reverted that to, uh, to like, a large panel. For whatever reason, it's not choosing the first one, wall flat, but it's always going to a large panel. Even though I always use uh, wall flat. It's kind of like the fucking with me. Now, um, you can see here, actually not very well, I will use my flashlight. Um, you see here that now we have this diagonal uh, iron uh, steel thing here. Uh, this also makes it harder to deal with the cables. You can see um, I cannot cut the cables now. Here I can still, but other places I can't. There's actually a remedy for this. If you place a round cable in there now that po points upwards, and uh, or maybe a, a straight cable would also work, uh, and then connect the two, you know, in the usual way, you just place it with the um, wire cutters in the other hand, then this will stick out far enough from this, mm, whatever this is, that you can cut it. Anyway, so uh, let's place the the thing here and then suddenly our airlock will look passable much better um, before I close this up I want to actually we need some more electricity no do we we have two batteries now and yeah we have two batteries oh no I don't have energy oh yes I have energy wait which one is it now would it be wouldn't it be nice to have a summary statement let's make a summary statement So the diode slide, like I said, is kind of a progress bar, and we will use it as such right now. And this will be very, very, very easy to use very fast. I'm pretty
pretty sure there's structure dial slide. Yep. Oh, the cooling kicked in. Ah, damn. Okay. Whenever I plan such a thing, I lose it on my eyes. So, load batch named into register. No, not named. Load batch. Load into register R0. Uh, hash structure battery. Oh, no, I don't. Uh, I already have those up here. Um, as a constant. And, of course, I could do this now. Like, I'm just doing it. But it's dirty. Let's define it here. Define. See, there's bat... So I'm doing this, and I'm not doing this down here. It would make sense to do it up there then. Load batch into register R0 from all the batteries. Uh, the logic type shall be ratio, and I want the average. Careful, if you have a battery that has more capacity, as in, I mean, uh, a large station battery, then you cannot just add these two together or something. That would be a com more complex calculation. For example, let's say you have uh, 100 station batteries of the large type, which are all full, and now you have one small station battery, which is completely empty, and then you take the average of the full ones, which will be one, and the average of the empty ones, which will be zero, and then you add that together and make the average, then you will have a statement that says you have 50% of your potential station uh, electricity, which is bullshit. You had 99.99%. So anyway, uh, now we loaded that into register R0. Now I want to write batch named into CLS slide uh, ins slide. I haven't named it yet. Hmm. Uh, setting uh, R0. And I also want to turn that thing on. So let's um, define CLS slide hash. Oh, damn. Structure diode slide define in slide hash sleep but. Right batch named class slide in slide setting R zero. I also want to turn those on. I want to turn the thing on. I don't need to, okay? Um, but uh, I want to. Uh -huh. So export. Nothing's hap nothing's happening yet because that thing isn't um, named yet. So nothing's being referenced in practice. Sleep, uh, but. And there we go. That's my... Oh. Wait, it clicks every time now? I'm not used to this. I... This is... Uh... Okay, I guess we now get to see the benefits of the branch relative statement. Load batch named into register R0. CLS SLE ins, uh, ins slide whether it is on. Um, branch relative not equal to 0. R0 2. So. Uh, oh, I realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid me. Stupid me. Instead of writing one here to turn that thing on, I was writing a new value every time, which is the constantly changing charge of the batteries. But, uh, whatever. Now you have seen how that would work, you know? Uh, okay, I don't need this then. Write batch named into that thing on one. Okay. This also consumes electricity, but uh, eventually we have so much of that that this little thing doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so how did I get there? Uh, station battery, I was, I was just walking past these, was doing stuff over here. Decoration, okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to... Um, the problem is I want to close this thing. 
But if I need a full uh, battery, then I would do this. In other words, I would rather take one of these. But I don't have one here. Well, so what I'm getting at is I want to print some large batteries. Which also makes sense anyway, since the mining drill takes a bit too much electricity for my taste. I mean, not as in reality simulation, but as in small battery? Nope. So, large battery. Takes copper, steel and gold. I will make two. No, I will make three. This is the locker with all the cheap stuff with the... the oh man, what's, what's happening? Uh, need much more copper. So, now let's use the tool manufactory. Here, we can do multiple things. One of them, we can make spray paint. And that will come into play now. And, as you already know, also the air yes scrubber is no more drinking. Instead of doing this, you can also make the spray gun, which is much more effective. Maybe I can make this now, or can do I need the uh, advanced thing for that? I don't know. Gun, flare gun, no, spray... No, I need the, uh, the advanced uh, uh, one. Okay, so I can do this now. Alright. Okay, that's enough for now. We now have made four. And I want to show you something regarding battery load, um, cable load. Currently our station is using this amount, one kilowatt, one kilowatt. And now that these batteries are in there, it is using almost 2000 watts. So let's add more of these. Now we add, oh, I thought it would be more. Okay, we have 3000 watts. If I turn on the wall heater, we will temporarily be at 4,000 watts. Yeah, we're at 4,000 now, so yeah, we're reaching the limits here. Uh, it's still cooling down. Ah, yes, mm-hmm. Oh, now it's stopping the cooling, because it's getting too warm. How nice this works, isn't it? Doesn't it? Shouldn't it? Uh, okay, now that we have these batteries, which are charging, they're, of course, char taking that energy from somewhere, which is here, the, which is where that is going down. Um, maybe I want to express that this is electricity. So we'll just take one of my spray painting gun cans here. I wonder where the black one is. Is it somehow in a locker or something? And I can spray this. Hello, that's my electricity. And now this thing is already complaining. <laughs> um, so let's make some... How I am. Haha. Oh, should I use red paint here? Here it goes. Because it's power, important. Just, you know, some kind of... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. That kind of flies. It's arbitrary, ultimately. Um, so, now, ju just like in page design and uh, layout design and, um, and all of that, um, less is more. So, the fewer different colors you're using, the easier it is to not um, be uh, offensive to the senses, basically. Can't spray the paint that but that guy. <laughs> Almost that motherfucker, but didn't. <laughs> so.
So, first impression, okay, let's move that away, is uh, that this looks a bit less chaotic, right? Station is alive, even though we don't have chicken. Um, well, so I guess we should try to cover most of the floor then. Let's produce those walls then. How many will we need? We have a one, two, three wide station. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, that's uh, 15. Okay, that's enough. Ah, uh, it's, it's um, empty anyway. But you should always have some coal in there, because if you need it, you don't want to run around. Do I have coal still and stuff, you know? Um, and I, I, I have coal still, but what if I hadn't and I need it? So, best be prepared. This will, of course, making any work will make any work on the on the wiring harder. And also, now that these thingies are lying there, I cannot place the floor here because I might push something underground or rather uh, hide it. Then don't want to do that. What do I do with this? How many do we have by now? Uh, 12 13 14 15 And now some steel sheets please Those will be faster And before I actually spray paint the entire floor, here's a trick. Actually, I didn't think of that. Hey, everybody, I just thought of something. Uh, uh, which is, I can spray paint the entire stack, which saves me on paint and on pollutant. And you can do th the same to uh, cables, by the, uh, by the way. And um, if you then have a cable stack in hand, that is, or is somewhere in here, that's, for example, blue, and then you drag a cable on there that's green or red or whatever, that cable will also be added to the blue stack, will also become blue. Or was it the other way around? Anyway, that's kinda how it works and now you know what to do, so test it out first. But I think it is the way I said. So later then you will be able to step backwards in this video to a position where it didn't even start, hadn't yet started with the uh, decorations. And then you can uh, compare the, uh, the difference. Maybe I will actually put some link, a large panel, nah nah nah, flat. Ah, nice. <laughs> Five grams? Why is that even a separate thing, man? And one of the upsides of black is that you can see the light nicely ref 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 uh, reflected in there. And wall flat. Okay. Anything that I want to change about the cabling, because now is a good opportunity. Logic is not connected here. Not that it's necessary, but you know, once it becomes necessary, I will bite my own ass.
if I had placed this not in such an idiotic spot, where it's like in four uh, states of the uh, United States at the same time, but uh, uh, in the center of it, then I could place uh, the kit door roll cover on the ground and open it and have access to the ship and close it and then not have access to the ship. But the placement is the way it is. Okay, we have to look with that. Yeah, what I wanted to do once the batteries are charged is I wanted to um, swap this out. And um, something else? No, actually. Whatever. So where are the walls? Uh huh. Kept them on me so I wouldn't lose them. Losing one's own inventory is even most likely. One too many? Yeah, of course. But, um... Why not Zoldberg? Come on, I wanna place this. Why can't I? I can't. <clears throat> now let's go crazy with the spray paint, right? Because everything's still a bit too colorful. Doesn't all have to be black, but... Um, uh, let's go with black for now. Definitely this one. And... Mr. Scrubber dude. Scrub Scrubby do we do. A large battery is even better for this guy for this guy. Um so how full is uh, the filter? 95. I was on, except it wasn't. <laughs> Hilarious. <clears throat> so that is spray painted, that and that, and this isn't. This is critical. kitchenware, and actually the black paint is uh, is uh, used up already. No! Aha! So I can prevent it from spitting it out. Uh, white paint, please, because this is kitchenware. Why not? Then blue paint, please. I, I don't have the blue paint. Hey, some some paints actually got lost. Let's make it then. Oh no, I made a blue paint bottle, I remember. Or did I take it from there? Hmm. For the cooling. I should have spray painted those before, huh? Yeah, you cannot spray paint these ones there on the wall, which is stupid. But if I remove them, spray paint them, and put them up, then they will be spray painted. That is obviously shit, but, you know. And this one, uh... I should make that red, I guess, because it's the heating. But then again, uh, I'd rather make that black. So that it doesn't stick out unless it's on. So, now we're cooling again, somewhat. I still can't fathom why this thing is so weak. I have done this so many times. Why is the cooling assembly so weak? Oh, I think I have an idea. The indoor pressure... No. No, that's not the pressure. The uh, pressure is not the reason. Uh, one thing that we also have to ca take uh, into account, and now that we have an indoor gas sensor, which can, ch which can tell us the mixture, is, well, the gas mixture, you know? Uh, because mm, the plants, they need the certain gas. They need... Um, CO2 and now we have 10% of that and if I put up more plants then they will convert that they will convert that into oxygen and at some point they will die of starvation 
So, uh, two potatoes and thriving towards seeding. Okay, I will leave that like this. Still 10 liters of water. Add 10 liters still. Okay, not, not complaining. Um, more spray paint. Doing this from the outdoors would have been wiser, but who cares? I mean, I've, I'm, everything's polluted anyway. What's the pollution levels in here? Oh, not too high because the scrubber is running. It, if it wouldn't be running, then I guess the plants would at some point start to complain. Okay, this looks way better, I would say. There's still the stupid red cables, which are sticking out like a sore thumb. And spray painting all of those, that will um, take some time. But I think the principle has been demonstrated nicely. What? Cannot access that cable? Weird. Looks almost slick, if it weren't for the colorfulness of these things still and all the structures, but okay. Uh, yeah, green sp spray paint for oh, this one. Mm -hmm. Much better. And that's it for today. That was today's agenda and I did actually all of it, except for exp expanding the station with a new room, but you know, good enough. Oh, let's, let's wait for a moment, because we are almost reaching our target temperature here. All of these consume electricity, so putting up some more wind turbines and some more batteries would be a good idea. And there are also other energy sources. You can actually use solar panels on Mars in a storm, yes, because there are hardened solar panels. And you can also put them in a box room like this one, because the light is coming in. See, now here over there, where, the indoor, where there's the indoor sensor, we have 22.2 um, degrees. If 22 would have been our hard cutoff for on and off, that thing will now be turning on and off again, again, again. But now we have a range from 22 to 25, so that's fine. So what about cooling? Uh, what about uh, it being too cold then? Uh, let's uh, see how full this uh, water storage is. That we have lots of space there, so let's toss down some more water. And 20 degrees is the cutoff, I think, for starting to heat. But um, and it will heat until we are 22, and then it will turn off. Convenient, convenient. Yes, my own station on Mars, and this is, I would say, the very beginning still. But there's still so much ahead, man. But that's it for today. So, let's fly around on the outsides like last time. 